we will will be the last day of the of the of the meeting. Uh, today we will mostly talk about um, standard operating procedures, so harmonized protocols of Glossolan. Um, we will listen from the Glossolan initiative on spectroscopy. We will also learn about the um, ongoing collaboration between Glossolan and other. Um, institutions outside the FAO. Um, before that, uh, we have some guest speakers with us today. We will make some announcements about uh, international conferences and symposia, uh, which will take place uh, in 2024, um, for which we we should be very excited because they, they also will involve laboratories. So without any further ado, I would like to um, give the floor uh, to Mr. Eduardo Costantini, who is the president of the um, International Union of Solid Science Societies, USS, who will talk us about uh, the next year, uh, 100th year anniversary of USS. So, uh, Mr. Costantini, over to you, and thanks again for being with us. Thank you very much, uh, Filippo. It, uh, it is really a pleasure for me to be with you, hosted by Glossola. Uh, there is a long-standing collaboration between the IUSS and the FAO. And so I'm very glad uh, to be here and uh, have the opportunity uh, to, to introduce uh, briefly the IUSS uh, and uh, the next uh, uh, Congress, uh, which will celebrate uh, the centennial of uh, the Union. I think that I can uh, share my, uh, my screen. I hope that you can... Uh, yeah, it's, it's good. Okay, it is fine. Perfect. Yeah. And um, so, um, what is the International Union of Soil Sciences? Uh, the International Union of Soil Sciences is the global union of soil scientists. And uh, the objectives uh, of the IUSS are to promote all branches of soil science and to support all soil scientists across the world in the pursuit of their activities. The IUSS aims to promote the recognition of soil as a vital resource in need of sustainable management and conservation. And uh, this is a common uh, objective uh, between us and the Global Soil Partnership, of course. What is important to underline is that the IUSS is a free and autonomous organization financed primarily by member contributions providing a reputation for soil scientists and the collaborative space. So we are free from any uh, bias, uh, uh, either governmental or political. Uh, the IUSS is based on two pillars. First one, it is a union of national societies or academy, the full members, and then it is an organization of soil scientists, the individual members. The structure of uh, the IUSS is uh, constituted by uh, two pillars, uh, governance and science. The governance uh, is made by the council, which collects uh, all full members, the executive and president's committees, uh, the secretariat, which is responsible for the day-by-day -day management. Uh, the science organization is our strength. It, it is based upon four divisions, 21 commission, uh, 17 working groups, uh, and a forum. The four divisions are the following. Division one, Soils in Space and Time. Uh, it is constituted by the six uh, commission, soil morphology and micromorphology, soil geography, soil genesis, soil classification, pedometrics, and paleopedology. Division two is uh, all about soil properties and processes, uh, and is constituted by five commission, soil physics, soil chemistry, soil biology, soil mineralogy, soil chemical, physical, and biological interfacial reactions. Division three is uh, about soil use and management with uh, six uh, uh, commission, soil evaluation and land use planning, soil and water conservation, soil fertility and plant nutrition, soil engineering and technology, soil degradation control, remediation and reclamation, and salt affected soils. And then there is division four, the role of soils in sustaining society and environment, which is made by five uh, Commission, Soil and Environment, Soil Food Security and Human Health, Soil Use and Land Use Changes, Soil Education and Public Awareness, 
history, philosophy, and sociology of social science. Then we have a, a, a set of working groups um, related uh, to one or more divisions. Uh, in division one, we have cryosol, digital soil mapping, digital soil morphometrics, global soil map, proximal soil sensing, soil information standard, which is very much related to Glossoland, soil monitoring, which is also related to Glossoland, universal soil classification, and world reference base. In division two, we have hydropedology, international soil modeling consortium, division three, acid surface soils, forest soil, paddy soils, soils of urban industrial traffic mining and military areas, and division for cultural pattern of soil understanding and young and early career scientists. The main outputs of the OSS are the following. Every four years, we have a World Congress of Soil Science, and in between, we have an inter-congress at the global scale. Then there are some special events like the Centennial uh, Congress and celebration of next year in Italy. And every year we produce uh, a set of uh, outcomes. Uh, first of all, we organize uh, in between 40 and 80 main scientific events uh, organized directly by division, commission, the working groups, uh, alone or in combination uh, between them or with other organization. And uh, I want uh, uh, to underline that uh, every year we organize uh, together with uh, the FAO over 2,000 events uh, for the World Soy Day on the 5th of December. Then we uh, produce uh, two bulletins uh, a year and 12 alerts, one a month basically. And uh, we also publish uh, books uh, in an uh, open source format uh, mainly, and uh, they are distributed uh, through our uh, social media. And then uh, we give awards and prizes, which are very important because, as I told you, uh, they are basically awarded on the basis of the appraisal of the members. So it, it is a, a peer evaluation. And uh, the prizes are the Dokuchave Award and Polypic Award for Basic and Applied Researchers, the Jeju Award for Young and Mid-Career Soil Scientists, and the IOSS Distinguished Service Medal for Outstanding World Soil Leaders who have translated soil science into action. Then we have many other awards and prizes given directly by the division and commission and working groups to the member. Then we have the honorary members, which are outstanding scientists of the IOSS. And then we work a lot to promote our individual members by other scientific organizations, such as the ISC, the International Science Council, which is the most important international organization related to science. It's the global voice of science in the world, very strongly related to the organization of the Nations Union. And then we have also this activity, which is uh, last but not least. So we provide some seed money uh, for stimulus fund and project just to support uh, uh, initiatives uh, uh, carried out uh, by our members. Then we have uh, our uh, website and social media, as you can see here. And uh, the next event, the main next uh, event of, ne of next year are the inter-Congress meeting which will be uh, hosted uh, by our Chinese colleagues uh, in Nanjing in October 2024. And uh, what uh, it is uh, the main uh, uh, event of next year, the celebration of the centennial, which uh, will be in Italy, uh, basically in Florence, in Florence, but uh, also in other parts of Italy. And the general themes that will be uh, treated uh, in the event will be the following. Soil health in achieving the sustainable development goals. Soil in the digital era. Soil sciences impact on basic knowledge. Soil governance, soil and humanity. Soil in the circular economy. Equity, diversity and inclusivity in soil sciences. So, so far we have already accepted 100 sections Possibly some of them will be merged. 
at the end of the process uh, of uh, the abstract for, uh, submission. The call for abstract submission is already open and uh, the deadline is the 15th of January next year. And also we have some grants provided by the IUSS for uh, young uh, scientists, uh, which is also open. So I uh, suggest you to go to the website and uh, look uh, at uh, these uh, opportunities. Then, as I was mentioning before, we have a set of uh, other activities uh, before the conference and post the conference. Uh, one of them will be here in, in Rome, in Villa Lubin, uh, where the uh, IOSS was founded in 1924. And then there are uh, a set of other uh, excursion, uh, technical, scientific excursion, but also cultural excursion <laughs> all over Italy. And as you can see in this map, the, the possibility are many to visit uh, different uh, environment and facing different uh, scientific issues uh, uh, from issues related to natural environment in the Alps, uh, in the Apennines, uh, to very anthropic, uh, anthropic uh, environments, uh, agricultural, but also urban. So you have uh, plenty of opportunity uh, to experience uh, directly in the field uh, the relationship between soil and different uh, uh, issues. And uh, the, the deadline for booking the technical excursion is also next uh, 15th of January. And uh, so I finish up my brief introduction of the centennial. If you have any question, I am happy to answer. Thanks a lot, Mr. Costantini, for uh, presenting the next year uh, centennial celebrations for the USS. I think it was uh, pretty interesting to listen to that. And um, maybe you can uh, write in the chat the links to the website and the various resources you mentioned. So. In case people would like to, to access the website for the centennial, they can find more information straight there. Um, and thanks again. I don't know if there is any questions for Mr. Costantini. Otherwise, we will um, move forward to the next presenter. I don't see any comment in the chat. But and thanks again, then, uh, Eduardo. Uh, I will give the floor to the next presenter, which is Mr. Who is Mr. Uh, Jean Augusto Gay, who is also the vice chair of Eurozolan. Uh, we'll talk about the 11th International Soil Congress uh, titled Challenge Soil Threats Save Your Future Horizon. So, Jean, uh, over to you. Thanks. I think you're muted, Jean, if you're not here. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, Sorry. Good, thanks. Yeah. Can, can you see the presentation? Yep. Yeah, we can. Thanks. Okay, is, is it in screen mode? Yeah, yes, perfect. Thanks. Okay, okay. So, um, yeah, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, dear participants, as everyone says. Uh, I'm very much happy to have this opportunity to introduce Turkey and announce an international soil congress that will be held in Cappadocia region, located in central Turkey between September 23rd to 25th of uh, 20. Uh, 2023. Um, so, okay, why Cappadocia? Let's start from this question. So actually it is a wonderful place uh, in terms of its unique geological formations, as you can see from you know the background of this uh, visual material. And it's a historical significance and captivating landscapes. So the first thing I should say actually, uh, the, 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 the iconic feature of the Cappadocia. So it, it's a surreal landscape covered by fairy chimneys, tall cone-shaped rock formations formed by volcanic uh, eruptions long time ago. So these rocks have been sculpted by wind and water over the time, uh, which creates caves and unique natural structures. And another uh, iconic feature is the reality of underground cities, as you can see from these visuals. Uh, they were built by ancient civilizations as hiding places during times of conflict. So these underground complexes could shelter uh, thousands of people, sorry, 
uh, and uh, equipped with ventilation shafts, wells, and various chambers. I mean, ancient technologies over multiple levels. So definitely they reflect uh, a certain uh, technologies created by an ancient civilizations leading the area in that time. Um, Cappadocia is also famous with cave, the wellings and church uh, covered into soft rocks. So there is a specific area namely Goreme, harboring an open air museum, exhibiting ancient caves, church adorned with beautiful frescoes depicting scenes from Bible, providing a glimpse into the region's rich history. Well, as you may know, there's a famous slogan about Turkey. Let, uh, people say, let's meet where the continents meet. So the reality beyond this uh, slogan does not mean only a geographical connections among lands, but also implies deep cultural diversity accumulated in the heart of central uh, Turkey, which is actually Cappadocia. So for the centuries, the cultural heritage of Cappadocia has been shaped by various civilizations, including Hittites, Persians, uh, Romans, Ottomans, and, and, and finally, the young Turkish Republic established by the great founder Mustafa Kemal Atatürk 100 years ago. We are celebrating the 100th uh, anniversary of our Republic uh, in these days, by the way. So I think I talked too much about history and let me tell you about most popular activities, most actually recently, most popular activities in Cappadocia, which is hot air ballooning. So the landscape makes for an incredible backdrop as hundreds of colorful balloons floating above the fairy chimneys during sunrise, offering breathtaking panoramic views. But this is something you should definitely try if you come to Cappadocia. So bringing all these beauties together, the 11th International Soil Congress in Cappadocia will be a giant organization of Soil Science Society Turkey, Potato Research Institute of the Turkish Agriculture Ministry, and, uh, and a local partner, Nefşehir Hacıbektaş Veli University, located in Cappadocia. Uh, so, so starting from the first organizer, Soil Science Society of Turkey, established in uh, 1964, almost you know, 60 years ago. So it's a, a 60 years non-governmental organization managed by a group of um, scientists uh, from the different uh, sections of uh, soil science. And, and in Soil Science Society of Turkey is a diverse member pool, including over 800 people from universities, public and private institutions represented by um, over 20 national focal points all over Turkey. So just like soil societies of many other countries, we as SST are mainly responsible for raising awareness on regional and global soil problems, providing consultancy for especially governmental institutions relevant to su uh, sustainable soil uh, management, et cetera. But more importantly, we organize uh, national and international Congress symposiums and workshops to bring soil fans and experts together to discuss about the future of our soils. So as a member of SSST, I'm very much proud to say that we achieve so many national and organize, uh, international scale organizations in the past and, the, and one of uh, which is actually Eurosoil 2016 uh, held in Istanbul. Um, six, seven years ago. And, and this is the, the Board of Soil Science Society of Turkey, as I mentioned, a, a different you know, um, soil scientists from the different areas of uh, soil science. So um, our local partner, Potato Research Institute, is a research body operating under Minister of Agriculture and Forestry, as I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation. And uh, its main activity is actually potato, as you can see from uh, this uh, slide. Uh, here is one of their uh, interesting outcomes of their works, potato chips with different pattern and colors. Um, so you, you, you may have an opportunity to taste one of, you know, of their uh, products if you come over to Cappadocia. So it is interesting that Cappadocia is harboring thousands of natural and man-made cave networks, as I mentioned before. 
which are used as natural storage facility for post-harvest storage of uh, some vegetables, mainly potato. And the, the one of the um, responsibilities of this institute is just governing, you know, organization of uh, the operations of uh, storage. So as far as I know, um, you can use these storage facilities four seasons, and there's a kind of temporary stability inside against to extreme hot or cold in winter time. So it will be really, really nice experience to visit this natural cold storage facility if you come over. Um, yeah, this is the, our third local partner, Nevshi Hacıbektaş Veli University, which is a, a new generation educational and research institution in the middle of established in 2007 in the middle of Turkey. So they are doing great jobs to preserve ancient history and culture of Cappadocia. Uh, they have uh, quite many students and many uh, nice uh, infrastructures, nice facilities to welcome us uh, in Cappadocia, as you can see from uh, the, the pictures from left side, a Congress hall, and there's a view from the inside. So we will be very happy to welcome all of uh, you distinguished uh, soil scientists and researchers uh, in Cappadocia. So um, yes, uh, this is the main topics uh, of symposium. So we have many, many uh, sections. We will be very happy to see uh, almost all expertise of soil science in our meeting and previous uh, speakers, uh, Eduardo Constantini, it will be our one of keynote speakers. I will be very happy to announce this uh, information right uh, now here. And Yusuf Yini from FAO, uh, Global Soil Partnership Secretary, uh, will be our second uh, guest speaker. And we are trying hard to persuade uh, one more uh, distinguished scientist uh, from uh, European countries, which will be a sur surprise because we are still uh, in a kind of bargain to persuade him to join with us in Cappadocia. So where is Cappadocia? As I mentioned, right in the heart of Turkey, here in the central part. Anatolia is actually an ancient name of the central Turkey. We call it Anatolia in some cases. Um, so it is easy to have an access to uh, Cappadocia because there's an international airport, as far as I know. So you can have you can come to Istanbul and you can have a domestic flight from Istanbul to Cappadocia area just in an hour and then we can pick you up from the airport. Okay, so um, let's see the calendar of Soil Science Society International Congress. So early birth registration starts by uh, mid-April and then reg regular registration start by um, beginning of June and deadline for the receipt of other abstracts also. And um, by September 1st, we will distribute our final announcement and Congress program if everything's all right. So we will be happy to welcome all of you uh, in our Congress. Our title is Challenge Soil Traits, Save Your Future Horizons. Thank you very much for your attention. And I will be very happy if you have any you know, questions about uh, Congress and Cappadocia as well. Thank you, Filippo. Mm -hmm. Thanks again, John, uh, for sharing this invitation. I said I invite you as well to put the link in the chat so people can get additional information on the website. Um, thanks again. I see also here the, the, the section on soil analysis is, is present in the program. So I think laboratory technicians and heads and all Google members might be very interesting to join. Oh, yes, I, I want to add one more thing. I, we will be very happy to you know, have a, any activities or from uh, Glossolan or Eurosolan, we can uh, be very effective uh, grounds, you know, to realize any activity in relation to Eurosolan and Glossolan. Thank you. Yeah, that, that will be great. Thanks. Thanks for the proposal. We will work on that. Um, uh, to close this session, I would like now to invite my colleague Yusuf Figini from the NSL division, GSP Secretariat, to present next year's symposium. We already announced yesterday, the Grusland Chair, Mrs. Sostinelli, yesterday this announced that next year, uh, Grusland uh, should play a major role in the organization of two main events. One is the symposium on soil information and data, and the other is the next year, World Soil Day 
which is uh, who will which we will cover, which will be organized around this topic as well. So now we will listen more about this um, and see what is the outline of this event. And uh, and I thank already my colleague Yusuf for being with us. So over to you, Yusuf. Thank you, thank you, Filippo, and thank you, John, uh, for the presentation. It's quite interesting because I'm also the member of the of the Social Society of Turkey. I yes. attended three or four four congress. Uh, the first one was uh, in 2002 in Çanakkale, yes. my first uh, congress. I'm already in that picture that you put on the on the slide. Yeah. I was a young soil scientist. Uh, I was 24 years old. Well, yes. I will be there in yes. Turkey. We will be happy to be there. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. I'm going to talk about the symposium next year's symposium. Uh, we have been organizing organizing symposiums uh, symposia since 2017. I will give you a small recap, and I will get into details after after that small recap. Uh, this is the uh, agenda of the of the last year's uh, plenary assembly of the GSP. It was endorsed by the GSP GSP plenary assembly back in uh, July 2023, not last year. This year actually, uh, it was endorsed last year and and this year, and they asked us to get prepared for the next year's symposium, which will be on soil information and data. So. Small recap that, as, as I said, we started organizing symposia uh, 2017. We started with uh, soil organic carbon, and uh, it was followed by soil pollution, soil erosion, by, uh, soil biodiversity, salt affected soils, and soils for nutrition. And uh, this year, uh, the last one that we organized uh, on uh, soils and water. So we started uh, organizing this symposia in person until uh, until until COVID arrived. We had to postpone the Soil Biodiversity Symposium from 2020 uh, to 2021. We organized together with the Global Symposium on Salt Affected Soils, and starting from uh, from this year, uh, we are getting back into into normality. The GSOA Symposium, the Symposium on, Symposium on Soils and Water. Uh, was organized in a hybrid hybrid mode. It was in person as well as that uh, with uh, with online participation uh, for the for the technical technical sessions. And next year, uh, global symposium on soil information and data. We already started uh, getting prepared for the next year's symposium, and it's already endorsed by the by the GSPPA. Uh, in 2025, we will have the symposium titled. Uh, uh, global Symposium on Soil Sealing and Urbanization. So, whatever you are going to see uh, on these slides, they're just uh, they're just draft. Uh, nothing has been has been decided yet. the The slogan here is is not is not is not defined yet. Uh, the title is there: the Global Symposium on Soil Information and Data. We call it short the uh, GC 2020, uh, 2024. So uh, the symposium uh, is soil data and information. We have two big technical networks, the Glossolan, but uh, here uh, we have, I think, more than 900 lab labs, laboratories, soil laboratories there. And we have the INSEE network. INSEE is the International Network of Soil Information Institutions. Uh, we have 122 uh, soil information institutions from 121 countries plus the European Union. So these technical networks will be leading the uh, the, the, uh, the preparation, also organization of the of the symposium for the next year. So what we see is uh, here on the on the screen is the the symposium will be chaired by by ITPS ITPS chairperson, INSI and Glossolan uh, chair, chair, uh, chairpersons. We will have three symposium chairs. And we are going to establish a scientific committee soon, as soon as we are okay uh, with the concept note. We are now uh, preparing the concept note. Uh, it's, it's, it's still draft yet. And Glossolan will receive that concept note for, for review, uh, let's say within two weeks. So we will be establishing a scientific committee and the members uh, will be coming from the ITPS. We have 27 experts uh, in the ITPS. 
and some of them will be will be part of the scientific committee and members uh, also from the INSI and the Anglosola. And uh, like any other uh, big symposia, symposium, uh, we will have also a random scientist uh, to be to be invited to be to be part of the scientific committee. That we have worked a bit uh, around the teams. Uh, that what we need to, what we need to do. Uh, then we need to ensure that the, the symposium should be covering all aspects of soil information and data because soil information is and data is a very uh, generic concept. So we need to uh, be uh, we need to ensure the 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 coverage of a wide variety of of topics and 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 subjects. And uh, FAO is a is a is a, is a place the policy place. And we need to we need to be sure that everything is aligned with the current global, regional, and national uh, policy priorities. And we need to see and address current challenges and opportunities. We need to ensure balance of theoretical and practical pr uh, perspectives, and uh, fostering international and cross-cultural perspectives. And we need to encourage cross-disciplinary dialogue and collaboration. And the results should be actionable. Because uh, FAO's symposia are very much action-oriented. Each symposia, after the each symposium, uh, we publish an outcome document. Then there will be an outcome document called outcome document for the for the uh, for the symposium on uh, symposium on soil information and data, and we will have set of recommendations and uh, actionable items uh, to be implemented by the FAO, by countries, and uh, by other entities. So potential potential teams, as I said, these are this is a draft concept note, uh, part of the dra draft concept note, this and uh, the title of the teams or sub teams are draft that we are going to discuss if you have time today. I will be asking uh, the floor uh, for feedback and for comments. Uh, we need to add edit uh, sub teams here, or we need to change uh, some aspects. So, what we see, we we will have four 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 teams. Uh, team one is add uh, so, uh, on soil soil data collection analysis and uh, soil data quality. Uh, team two is focusing on policy making and decision making. Uh, team three, data ownership ownership. IP policies, sharing and collaboration in soil science. Uh, the focus should be soil information and data. And team four ch is challenges and opportunities in soil data standardization and interoperability. These are key uh, areas uh, when we are talking about soil information and data. There are, sub -sub there are some sub teams that we uh, have listed here. Uh, under team one, advances in soil data collection, analysis, and data quality, uh, we will have we will have four sub teams. Maximizing the soil data quality, uh, laboratory techniques and SOPs uh, for soil analysis, and dedicated uh, sub team for proximal sensing because because it's an emerging topic. We have a dedicated uh, technical network. Uh, if I'm not wrong, it's called Globes, uh, Globes, Glossal and Spec. Ye or Filippo can uh, can correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, digital soil mapping techniques and applications, including artificial intelligence uh, and machine learning, another emerging topic that everyone uh, knows. Uh, that artificial intelligence it, intelligence is quite quite popular nowadays. Uh, soil data and information for policy and decision making. The, we need to discuss the role of soil data in achieving SDGs, climate change adaptation and mitigation. And soil data will improve sustainable soil management and food security and stakeholder engagement and community building for, for resource mobilization. We want to we want to uh, put symposium also, also uh, a place that we can uh, we can discuss more and we can mobilize uh, more resources for uh, the topics that we will be discussing during this symposium for soil information and data data ownership uh, the sub team 
uh, 3.1 is ethical considerations and data ownership, uh, promoting open data and collaborative platforms in, in soil science, uh, promoting fair data use and other aspects of, of open data and capacity building for effective data sharing and collaboration. sub team four, challenges and opportunities on, in, in standardization and interoperability. Uh, we want to discuss uh, soil information systems, decision support systems and tools uh, for, for, for the governments, for farmers, uh, for all kinds of end users, best practices and collaboration. Uh, sub team 4.2 will be advancing soil data standards and harmonization. So on top of those teams, the four teams that we, we defined, uh, we will have side events, panel discussions, some uh, competitions uh, on, on on selected topics, including mapping, on uh, all the topics could be could be coming from uh, from the global one, and expert roundtables and and uh, similar sessions. Topics will be uh, soil information decision support systems, standards, harmonization. So provisional timeline, the, the PA already endorsed uh, the symposium last year and they confirmed the, the endorsement this year. And we are all, we are already working on the concept note. Concept note is not a like large uh, pages of concept note, but two pages or three pages concept note, putting everything together, all, all elements, all components of, of, the, of the symposium. As soon as we have uh, the final concept note, uh, we will start establishing uh, the scientific committee. We will have the local organizing committee here at FAO, uh, at GSP, and the scientific committee, as I made a list uh, in, the, in the first first slides, uh, the members from ITPS, INSEE, Glossolan, and the research community. Then we will send out the first call like it will be a save the date uh, communication uh, hopefully in december then the second call should be for the abstracts uh, call for abstracts it will be out most probably in, in in february if we can make it in 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 january then we will ask uh, potential uh, participants and authors for abstract submission uh, from February to March, we can we might extend this to to April May. We will see the timeline. Then eventually the symposium uh, will be held in most probably in September 2024. The venue uh, we have had some internal discussions. Uh, as GSP is a partnership, we have we have hundreds of partners. We would like to use this opportunity to to organize the symposium uh outside of FFA, outside of FAO until now uh, we have organized the symposia at FAO or online or in person or hybrid and uh, this is the first time that we want to 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 move the symposium uh, to outside of FAO uh, to, to still to be facilitated to be organized by FAO by giving the opportunity to to a partner uh, to organize the symposium and then we had some initial discussions, initial contact with one of the partners uh, from China. If I'm not wrong, it's uh, CAAS, C A A S, the uh, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Yushin, can you can you correct me if I'm if I'm telling wrong the the, the name? No, no, no it's CAAS, the uh, Chinese uh, uh, China, uh, Academy of Science. Chinese Academy of Science, okay. not the CAS. It's the okay, CAS. Okay. okay, sorry for that. So, the, I didn't put here those details because uh, they are still under discussion. We need to we need to see internally. Also, we need to see with the partner. Uh, we need to discuss the logistics and the and the timeline and the concept, not everything. And you will be hearing from us in the coming weeks uh, that we will give uh, Glossolan and INSEE and ITPS more details on the on the exact dates. Uh, the venue and, and other details. Exact dates, we already asked um, 
here the meeting services uh, to 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 have the symposium in the third week of September. I said September. It will be most probably in third week of September, but I still not uh, not confirmed, not cleared yet. Uh, as I said, that uh, we will confirm it as soon as as soon as possible. Then this uh, the concept, the team, sub teams, and the and the and this uh, this, the, the it was discussed already with the ITPS and with INSI two weeks ago. And these are the reactions, first reactions from from the ITPS and and INSI, International Network of Soil Information Institutions. What we heard from them, they said we need to we need to we need to involve the private sector and uh, should be uh, explicitly mentioned in the concept note, uh, and they they need to be there for for development sector and private sector inter interaction, and the the agenda and the teams should be somehow less technical. Uh, involving also that uh, the other 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 players, including including policymakers. So we need to we need to work on that as well. Uh, there were some other other comments, for example, soil information and data for land use planning and uh, climate change mitigation. So we need to we need to uh, the, 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 you, you, we need to we need to have these teams and sub teams uh, to be to be formulated somehow to respect. To the global challenges, regional and national challenges, including land use planning, climate change mitigation, food security, and the target audience should be beyond INSI. Okay, beyond also global, and and it should go even to the general public. Uh, we need to give uh, like clear messages to to the general public, and something should be discussed also as as uh, connected to the previous point: soil information and data. Also for non-soil experts, because we are not working for ourselves. Ourselves, soil information and data are also being used by other disciplines, apart from policymakers or other other stakeholders. It's also important to discuss, address this issue. Non-soil experts, how we are going to, how we how we should uh, use uh, soil data and soil information to be used by by non-soil experts. And uncertainty, uncertainties are everywhere. I mean, uh, I'm a I'm a data person, soil information and data person, and we are here with the labs, and we know uh, how as, how much is is the uncertainty, how much important is the uncertainty. Should it should be also uh, discussed during the symposium how we communicate uncertainty to the end users, and policymakers, because we are we are giving them maps, we are giving them data data sets or or uh, knowledge products. We need to uh, communicate very well the uncertainties because n n none of the data products, maps, or data sets are, are perfect. Everything is an approximation. We need to find a way to communicate uncertainties uh, in, a, in a better way. And yeah, uh, some specific thing, non-agricultural land use systems. Uh, what? kind of uh, land use system that we need to address when we are talking about soil information and data. And they were saying uh, that the yeah, comment from yeah. INSEE uh, that it should not be mm. only on the crop lands or agricultural lands. We need to we need to see also other land uses, land use systems or land covers, including uh, forest lands and wetlands and other other land use systems. And sustainable land use, uh, land and uh, soil practices that should be somehow addressed uh, by the symposium as well. Yeah, this is uh, all from my side. Is uh, what I want to say more. We are working on the concept note. Glossolam will receive uh, the concept the concept note for for final review as soon as we have completed the internal procedure here. And at this very moment, I would like to ask Glossolam if. Uh, they have any thoughts on comments or feedback uh, on what we what I have presented. Also, I talk about the I I mentioned the science the scientific committee uh, for the symposium. If we have anyone interested here in participating in the in the in the scientific committee, thank you. Over to you, Filippo. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Yusuf, for the nice presentation. Uh, well, I would suggest to open a bit the floor or, the, or have a look at the chat if there is any proposal on, uh, on, on in terms of 
comments also for the for the topic you presented and if there is already someone who would like to 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 answer your call for joining the scientific committee why not um i would suggest that um maybe we can review the the concept not within the steering committee of glossland and come back with some suggestions also involving the members of the technical committee of of glossland the chair the vice chairs of the regional networks so we can come with some uh, some um, some feedbacks on that. But if there is any comment, I would suggest to put them in the chat. Uh, also, maybe Yusuf, you can uh, put your email address in the chat if possible. So in case of interest, someone can can approach you on that. Or you, yeah, it's on the screen actually. So you can copy the email address of Yusuf uh, in, in case you would like to to contact him. And have more information about the, the symposium, or in case you would like to express your interest to join to join the scientific committee. I'm reading to the chat. There is no one, no hands up. But uh, I think the best is, is indeed that we, we discuss this within the the Glossolam level, like in terms of technical and, and steering committees, and we'll come back with some feedbacks. Maybe this would allow us to, to think more about that. And now we can contribute. Okay. Perfect. Definitely yes, we will take part on the in the in the organization in the event. Uh, the chair of Lusna will be there in the, in the in the committee and so. So, well, thanks again for that. I think it will be very exciting uh, year twenty twenty four for the perspective of laboratories. So many things ahead. Um, thanks again, Yusuf. And uh, we had a little bit of delay, so we'll proceed to the next speaker with Mr. Eyal Bendor, who is the chair of the Glossula Initiative on Spectroscopy, Glossula SPEC. Eyal will report about the activities on spectroscopy over the yes. last year. And um, also, I would like to announce that a new coordinator for the initiative has been nominated. So Mr. Ipeng is back to the um, uh, team. So he will continue uh, the coordination of the Glossula SPEC starting from basically last week. So welcome back, Key, and Eyal, over to you for the presentation. Thank you, Filippo. My name is Eyal Bendor. I'm from the Tel Aviv University. Uh, I'm chairing the Glossland Spec uh, group, and uh, I would like to give you a brief uh, presentation of our activity over the past year. So general uh, idea of the Glossland Spec is to launch, uh, or it was launched in 22, but it was also in the purpose of building capacity for soil laboratories on uh, the use of this uh, technology, meaning uh, soil spectroscopy, to bridging together institution and experts from all around the world on the topic and to foster best of practice utilization, as well as to educate new users in this technology. In general, we have a steering committee uh, as it shows in this uh, table. So we are a, a nine uh, steering uh, members and they are coming from all over the world and each of them are expert in, in this field. And uh, they together we have uh, more than 100 years of expertise in soil spectroscopy. Also soil spectroscopy is uh, a little bit young meaning about 25, 25, maybe 30 years uh, since the technology, technology, technology emerged. We have many members at the moment. Uh, this is the 76 active members, but uh, from 28 countries and from the five continents. And there are more, uh, but uh, they are not yet registered. But uh, we know that in each of our summer school or in our uh, webinar we see more uh, more uh, members more people that are intending to be the member of the glossland spec as filippo announced uh, we had uh, we had a coordinator and uh, was named magdalene she left or resigned in the middle of 2023 and we had uh, no uh, coordinator in full-time job. It's very, very uh, hard to, to, to manage this group uh, with uh, no coordinator. As Filippo announced, we are now 
uh, or at least foul uh, uh, recur uh, another uh, the the former former coordinator of of uh, Spec, actually the one who who was the founder of the Iglosan Spec. This is Yi Peng, and uh, he just uh, come back to us, and I would like to welcome back Yi. I know he is here in the meeting, so I'm very happy, and all of us are very happy that you are back to us, and uh, you know everybody of us. You know the you know the uh, the initiative, and uh, you were the one who found this activity. So it is very important that you are with us at the moment. We have a regional champion on soil spectroscopy laboratory on, on soil spectroscopy. As you see in this map, we nominated them. And uh, uh, buongiorno. Excuse me. I think somebody was not muted. Anyway, this is the map of the uh, regional champion on soil spectroscopy. You see that they are covering the entire world. And uh, we are very, very much uh, active in this region. So we have uh, many activities within these uh, uh, laboratories and extending uh, um, opportunities to, to, to do comparison and get uh, uh, standard and protocols. And one of the key issue uh, in the 22-23 uh, activity, it was to do collaboration with IEEE Standard Association to form a standard and protocol to measure soil spectral in both laboratory and field. This is something that was missing, although the, you know, the technology is 30 years old. We didn't have uh, any uh, standard protocol. So this activity is, uh, is uh, supported by IEEE Standard Association. And also we uh, have uh, some foot from the FAO, from the Gloss and Spec in this activity. I'll show it later. And uh, also we performed uh, two summer school uh, with academic credit. I'll show this uh, in a few slides. And also perform a, tra a training activity as well. So as I said, one of the goal of our, of our uh, group is to uh, disseminate the know-how even to expert, but also to new users, because we think that this technology will help uh, the third world country and other laboratory to promote soil uh, soil uh, science in their countries. And uh, what else we did, we also uh, have uh, some uh, activity in order to build a worldwide spectral library that will be uh, actually part of the capacity of the Glosson spec and people will be able to get into the soul spectral library and get information of their homeland or geography area that they are interested in. So this is uh, most, of, most of the activity that uh, was, uh, was performing. So this is one, this is first slide to show the activity with the IEEE Standard Association. So we form already a standard protocol for the laboratory, as you see here, stage one and stage two. And now we are actually busy in forming a, a standard protocol for the field. And we are we are meeting uh, every four weeks or every six weeks. We had already met eighteen times. Yesterday was the last meeting of the year, and uh, we discuss. We present in uh, we present uh, the uh, results. We discuss, and in the end, we we uh, generate a protocol that is agreed by all of the members. And we vote for this protocol, meaning that the protocol is agreed by everybody. And then it goes to the IEEE Standard Association website and uh, disseminate around the world. We conducted uh, two 
summer school. This summer school was conducted in Tel Aviv in June 2023. It was, uh, it was a very, first of all, it was with the academic credit for the students. It was very fruitful and interesting uh, summer school that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, chaired by uh, Jose de Mate from, from the uh, University of Sao Paulo and myself. And uh, also we had invited speakers from Europe, some experts such as Bo Stenberger, Stenberg and uh, Maria Neidel. Um, and uh, the students were from India, from Morocco, from Israel, and also from Cyprus. So it was very, very fruitful and the students got credit in their universities because our university were providing this academic uh, academic uh, uh, credit. And as the university is uh, very well known, all of the other university agreed and confirmed this credit. Another summer school that we had uh, uh, managed, it was in Morocco. And this was totally for the new users of uh, the of of Morocco in the UM6P University. Uh, this was actually held in this university, but people from all Morocco uh, gather in in this university for this basic course in source spectroscopy. And uh, after this uh, uh, occasion, now. Each of them uh, went back to his laboratory, and now they are uh, they are uh, trying to get uh, more and more experience in this uh, in this uh, technology. And actually, we were trying to arrange this month another summer school in the in the UM six P in soil spectroscopy measure in the field. So most of the course that we gave in in uh, August was in basic source spectroscopy and laboratory, but this was for field spectroscopy, and this is totally different from laboratory. And uh, eventually this was postponed because of the situation here in the Middle East. Another, uh, another uh, uh, activities, these are the webinars that we gave in 2023. And uh, also, there was uh, it was planned to be to 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 held the uh, soil spectroscopy training uh, to to get with soil spectroscopy training manual, and this will be this will be launched in next year because it was not done this year. I think if I understood correctly from Yi, uh, this will be postponed for next year. Um. This is the international uh, soil spec net, uh, which is actually to get all information in one server that people can be use this information and will be open to everybody. And uh, the, the, the information uh, is actually gathered from 15 laboratories from 13 countries. Uh, another activity that we held was a, a ring trial with 70 samples that sent to 16 laboratories Europe-wide. And uh, these samples were analyzed uh, by the protocol and with other protocol. And we were comparing the results of each laboratory and then gathered the information together. So this was a very nice uh, uh, opportunity to see if the protocol is working correctly or people have some uh, new uh, issues or comments. And in a very few, in, in the near future, this, this uh, trial, uh, ring trial results will be published in a paper. Uh, this was actually, uh, was held by a mommer from a uh, university of, uh, of uh, Belgium, uh, the in 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 uh, 
ilove, ilove. Uh, another, uh, the World Source Spectral uh, Library, we had two opportunities. I mean, well, we, I mean, uh, many of us published a paper in 2016 about the Global Spectral Library, where about, uh, I think, 20,000 samples were provided to the, to, to the uh, uh, server of uh, Curtis University. And uh, Rafael Viscara Rosal uh, compiled this information into the soil, the first soil spectral library. But since then, many, many activity in soil spectroscopy has emerged. And the idea was to gather more information since 2016 and have a world soil library that will be available to all. It was some issues of uh, IP and things like that. But uh, I think in the end, there is some solution for that, but, uh, uh, and also some, uh, some, uh, 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 I'll, uh, some, sorry, some uh, uh, um, protocol and, and also uh, software, how everybody can use it and provide information or get information from the source spectral library of the world. So there is one direction held by Viscara Russell on this, on this regard. And the, the other direction is taken by Professor uh, Jose De Mate from University of Sao Paulo. He called this uh, initiative uh, World Soy Service. The same idea, but in a different, in different uh, 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 path. The idea was to collect information or soil spectral information from many, many users worldwide. This is the same as the other direction. But here, the idea is to have a service that everybody can get the proximal information about the field, about the area that he wants, but without having the, sp the spectral information, without, without having the chemical information in order to preserve IP. So this is uh, some slides to show the idea. On the right-hand side, you see that we are collecting so spectral information, chemical information from all over the world. And then there is a library. And we also collect uh, soil samples from the profile. And in the end, there is a server that holds the data. And using this data by modeling, you can get the proximal sensing of your area if you are uh, provide if you are giving the the geographic uh, location or if you are interested in uh, soil that is uh, inside this uh, uh, server this library. So mainly uh, this is the pyramid uh, that uh, the the University of Sao Paulo uh, evolved. So you see that we have uh, 94 countries already, 75 private researchers, and we have a lot of data, more than 100,000. Two regions, one is the thermal region and the other one is the optical region. And there are some uh, uh, online uh, information at the moment for, the, uh, for, for, for uh, training. And uh, there are also papers that uh, is uh, on the way and already published in this uh, initiative. This is uh, just to show you how the information we are dealing with the uh, huge number of data. So deep learning architecture is the one that uh, we are using in order to extract uh, proximal model for the area that uh, you are interested in, but this will be open to everybody. And this is one of the engine that the Glossland spec will provide uh, in the end to the members. Don't forget the other activity of uh, Viscara Rosals that he's also providing uh, information, soil spectral information, but in, in uh, another direction. So we have two nice uh, uh, paths to, to get information of soil from the whole uh, globe. So let me show you the objectives that we were we were we were having at the 
the, uh, at the beginning of 2022 and what we were actually done. So this is to summarize my presentation. So summer school to support the development of uh, regional and global level. So summer school and training activity have been done. To support countries in establishing their own soil spectra laboratories and national soil spectra libraries. Uh, this is Morocco and as example, one of the trainings that we did in Morocco. To support development of standard and protocol. This is the something that done with IEEE Standard Association. And to uh, con uh, continuously support the development of the global spectral estimation service by encouraging countries to share part of existing uh, soil spectral library they have. So this is the World Soil, uh, the World Soil Service, uh, as uh, leaded by uh, Jose De Mate and uh, Professor uh, uh, Rafael Viscara Rosal. Objective to support the development of, uh, this was already done, a ring sample tour, we did it already. Collaboration with P4000 Standard Association, done. Arranging summer school, done. Uh, preparing uh, cost action, this is, was in, on the, on the on to-do list of the last year. Apparently we didn't do it and preparing your academic uh, course already done. Uh, activity plan for 2023 and four, actually four, three is already gone. So continue with the World Source Specular Library archive and utilization, continue collaboration with the Standards Association of IEEE, getting to more users and disseminate the technology to Africa and South America and continue with summer school for soil spectral measurement and data analysis, conducting workshop, conference and special sessions. I just give here some examples where, and IUSS is one of them, of course. And the last, uh, yesterday, we were uh, we met in the in the standard association of IEEE and we decided to launch in the ESL CIS conference in Valencia April 19 a field ex exercise and workshop uh, that will be connected to the IEEE standard association uh, at the moment we are targeting 30 people 15 members and 15 students. And the idea is to go to the field and, and the launch all protocol we are now having and also the protocol that IEEE will, uh, will uh, uh, summarize at that time and to come up with data and perhaps even to have a paper on this uh, activity. And of course, more activity that will be decided in, at the next uh, steering committee meeting. So I would like to thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thanks for that. Thanks for that, Yal. A nice overview. Uh, lots of things ongoing, uh, despite the change of coordinators many times. So thank, sorry for that again. Uh, but hopefully um, all the activities will be implemented next year as, as you presented. So thanks again. Very ambitious work plan, but hopefully we will manage to implement it. Uh, I see there are some questions in the chat, so I can really um, uh, um, ask you to have a look. It's about a comment from uh, Zimbabwe asking if it's possible to arrange meeting in a way so that personal meetings. Uh, uh well uh, calendarization is is indeed important we'll try to not overlap meetings in the future um yeah they're asking about summer school so i will leave you uh Ayat, to answer the comments in the chat because we don't have much time actually we're in delay so i will uh very briefly go to the next item but thanks again to all presenters of these first two items um about the next item will, is about the working groups of Gosland, so the collaboration we have the different GSP technical networks uh, and uh, um with some external collaborations so i will now give the floor to the chair of Gosland, mrs maria mostirelli to moderate this item uh but due to some time constraints of the presenters we will maybe change the order a little bit but i will leave it to you miriam so thanks again and over to you Thank you, Filippo. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. 
Uh, as I said yesterday, during the update of the Glossolan activities, the joint working groups uh, between Glossolan members and the experts of the other technical networks of the GSP face uh, some task where we need mutual support, um, for example, to harmonize protocols, to research saline soils, or study biodiversity or pollution. Uh, um, so in 2022 and 2023, Glossolan work in joint working groups with the other GSP networks. Thus, uh, in this item, we will focus on the task carried out by the different joint working groups and uh, on the opportunities for collaboration with other networks. And also we can listen uh, other colleagues uh, talk, talk to us uh, about their works and proposal. Uh, please, if you have any question or want to give an opinion or make a contribution, I invite you uh, to put it in the, in the chat. Um, um, I can ask you, colleagues, to try to make your presentation in no more than eight minutes, because uh, we are a little behind on the on the agenda. Well, uh, first of all, we are going to listen to Mr. Warren Weber from the International Governance Committee. IGC for the International Symposium on Soil and Plant Analysis, ISPA. Uh, we change, uh, as, as, as uh, Filippo said, uh, we change a little the schedule because uh, Mr. Weber is from New Zealand and it's very late for him. So thank you very much, Mr. Weber, for your attendance to this meeting. Uh, Mr. Weber, please uh, take the floor. Thank you, Miriam. <clears throat> um, I'm just trying to share my screen, all right, Demona? Can you see that okay? Uh, not yet, actually. Okay, yeah. so... Perhaps you can help me with yeah, that. Yeah, if you want, I can show it from my, from my side. I think I yes, have... please. Second. Okay. Um, let me show this from my end and let me know when you want me to change slide. Okay. Second, sorry. Are you up there yet, uh, Felipe? Uh, yeah, it's coming. Just a second. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Will be this one. Okay, um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I bring you warm greetings from New Zealand, where it is currently uh, quarter past one in on Thursday morning. Um, but fear not, I have coffee. I have a coffee. Uh, my name is Warren Weber. I am um, the part-time executive officer for ASPAC in Australasia, uh, and I'm also a member of the International Governance Committee, um, which operates with the International Symposium on Soil and Plant Analysis. Um, slide, please. Change slide, please. <clears throat> uh, Filippo, can you hear me? Filippo. Change slide, please. 
Yes, sorry. Okay. Thank you. Um, the purpose of the uh, symposium events are to facilitate and promote the international sharing of knowledge and research in soil and plant analysis, uh, to provide a global focus for promoting excellence in soil and plant analysis, to encourage and promote the adoption of preferred soil and plant analysis methods and the use of sound agronomic interpretation and uniform terminology, all based on sound and proven science. And also to facilitate international communications relating to soil and plant analysis. Next slide, please. So the International Symposium on Soil and Plant Analysis uh, and its International Governance Group. Oversight for all ISSPA events now is via an International Governance Committee. Since the first ISSPA Symposium in 1988, there have indeed been 16 symposia, um, and these have been held in 10 countries on five different continents, and the countries are listed there. Next slide, please. The symposia was first established in 1988 by the Soil and Plant Analysis Council, commonly called SPAC, uh, based in North America. Subsequently, and following organizations the following organizations and regional groups have become increasingly involved in ISSPA participation and governance matters. So we have ASPAC, which is the Australasian Soil and Plant Analysis Council, Agrilasa from South Africa. We have a group from the Netherlands, Germany, South America, and China. On the right-hand side of the slide there, uh, I have listed the current members of the uh, of the International Governance Committee. Um, personally, I am a co-opted member, together with Dr. Robert Miller from uh, from SPAC. Uh, between Bob and I, we have considerable experience in running uh, these ISSPA events. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So Glossoland first participated in an ISSPA event this year in Chile. Um, there was one keynote presentation made by Glossoland and four presentations in the technical sessions. Thank you, next slide. We have established guidelines, guidelines for the management of the International Symposium. Uh, otherwise known as terms of reference. <clears throat> the rationale for formal guidelines and robust international governance is that it minimizes risk, it ensures the retention of event-specific knowledge, and it expands the engagement of international registrants and associations. Next slide, please. The full document, uh, the full guidelines have been shared with the Glossoland Committee. Um, these next two slides just have a couple of key elements. In round terms, there are three operating, cooperating committees for each event. There's the International Governance Committee, there's the Local Organising Committee, and a Scientific and Technical Committee. Next slide. Financials with any symposium event are very important and the guidelines are quite explicit and quite detailed about financial arrangements. Just a few key points here. For any committee member, there is no remuneration for participation in any committee. The attendance of any committee, uh, of a committee member at any meeting shall be at the expense of that committee member or their nominating entity, provided there is a written agreement um, to that. The fiscal intent of each 
ISSPAR event is for the local organising committee to manage the event such that a financial surplus is generated subsequent to the repayment of any seed funding which may have been provided. Next slide. So the point of our presentation today is to present the proposal that Glossolan uh, join the International Governance Committee with one representative to be involved in the organization of future ISSPA events. I understand the Glossolan Steering Committee has already provided positive feedback in this regard. Glossolan will have the chance to highlight the capacities and needs of its members operating worldwide. Next slide. So that's my presentation. I'm very happy to answer any questions. We would encourage you to be involved with, uh, with, um, with the International Governance Put Committee going forward. Um, there are some very robust and uh, well-respected associations uh, affiliated to this conference, and um, we would encourage the, uh, the, uh, the involvement of Glossoland in future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Weber. It, it's uh, very interesting, the proposal. So I think, uh, Filippo, you will launch a, a pool. Yes, uh, yes, thanks, To Miriam. decide if uh, to join IGC or not. Yes, uh, as uh, Mr. Weber uh, pointed out, and thanks again for your presentation, Mr. Weber, uh, we shared these questions with the Glossoland uh, Steering Committee some months ago and we got a positive feedback. Still, you know, we would like to have the official endorsement from the Glusulan members. So the question is again, um, would you agree to have Glusulan uh, to have a seat in the International Governance Committee for the International Symposium on Soil Plant Analysis? You may answer yes or no. Uh, as Mr. Weber pointed out, uh, we already participated to the last, uh, uh, last ISPA conference organized by the IG IGC. Um, it was pretty pretty promising in terms of future collaborations because indeed I think Glusolan can highlight the 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 role of of uh, these members and the laboratories worldwide. But uh, again, the final choice should come from the Glusolan members. So we would like to ask you to answer the poll if uh, you would agree with that or not, and then we will discuss within the governance of Glusolan who will be physically representing Glusolan there in the meetings of the International Governance Committee. Uh, if the chair, if the coordinator, if someone else from the uh, steering committee of Glossolan or someone else. So the, this decision will come later on. For the moment, we just want you to, to, to provide your, your feedback. I'll just few, wait a few more seconds to reach the majority. We are almost there. I can't ask you to, to vote. Okay, I will close the poll now. I will share the results. Well, uh, I think we, we received pretty positive uh, answers. So thanks for the proposal, uh, Mr. Weber. On, on, please share our, 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 um, our appreciation to the other members of the, of the committee. And I think uh, so then we will join. We will let you know soon who will physically join the meetings of the International Governance Committee. So we can work together for the organization of the next uh, ISPA conference. Thank you. Okay, thank Miriam, you. thank over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Weber, and thank you, Filippo. Uh, so um, now we are going to listen to Mr. John Parnell, the NetSoft coordinator, who going to talk to us uh, about the work of the, the Joint Working Group International Network on Soil Biodiversity, NetSoft, and Glossolan. Uh, so please, John, uh, take the floor. Okay, thank you. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Okay, and can you see my presentation? Uh, can you put in presentation mode? Sorry. Great. In a full. Can you see it now? 
I can see. I can see. No, it's, uh, we see a black window. Let me try that again. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I'm very excited to be able to um, share a little bit on the, the International Network on Biodiversity with this group. Um, the, the International Network on Biodiversity stems from the Convention on Biological Diversity that recently tasked the Food and Agriculture Organization with organizing activities around soil biodiversity into a group of people um, that are interested in biodiversity, that are interested in exploring um, the measurements as well as practices and policies and all, all around soil biodiversity. And then also a separate, um, which would be kind of a monitoring of global soil biodiversity. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about both of those uh, today. Um, but so in the, the International Network on Soil Biodiversity, we have four different working groups. Um, the first working group is really about how to measure soil biodiversity. What, what things should be, will we be looking at? What, what bioindicators? Um, and, and once we've figured out which ones are the important ones to be looking at, how do we actually measure those? Um, the second is, is about putting that into practice to say, okay, so what management practices do we have and can we implement that will benefit preserve or enhance soil biodiversity. And then the third um, working group is how do we actually put a price tag on soil biodiversity? How do we, how do we incentivize um, growers, land owners to, to implement practices that, that preserve biodiversity? And the, the, the last working group is how do we develop effective policies? What, what effective policies are already out there? What are some policies that that may not be as effective, and how do we we enhance those? How do we we build on that? So the thing that I love about the International Network on Soil Biodiversity is that it really links with so many of the other networks at um, FAO. So here, for example, you can see some of these other networks. Um, we've got black soil, salt affected soils, polluted soils. All of these. Um, all of these different types of soil, soil chemical um, issues are gonna have different impacts on soil biodiversity. And so we're interacting with all of these different groups to say, how do we, how do we measure soil biodiversity in black soils? And how is that different from how we would measure that in salt affected soils? Now, the important thing is that the, the how do we measure really relies on glossal water. And so that's really where, where Glow Salon comes in because what, what we want to do is we want to um, harmonize or standardize what we're measuring and how we're collecting those measurements so that, so that we can actually kind of compare different groups that are, are, are collecting these measurements. And that's, I mean, that's really, you know, Glow Salon has already been established to do exactly that. Um, so we're looking forward to relying quite a bit on Glow Salon to do that. And so I've, I've got kind of our, our, our pathway here, you know, of, of how we're going to kind of advance and, and which one of, so remember there were, there were um, several different working groups. Um, so right now we're looking at combining the, the economics and the policy working group into one working group that's just on incentives. So here I've got that in gray, but this is this is showing how those working groups all fall together. So this is kind of what we're hoping to do with the International Network on Soil Biodiversity. Um, and we really want to bring together um, groups that are networks and initiatives that are already measuring soil biodiversity into a, a, a big global soil biodiversity observatory. Uh, and that's what GLOSAB is. And so we've got the people on one side and we've got the actual monitoring, assessing um, on, on the, the other side. And those are gonna feed back on each other. So as we start to monitor, um, we'll be able to uh, fine tune the practices that we're looking, or we'll be able to say, you know, these types of bioindicators don't really work in this system. So let's go back and think about critical bioindicators in, in different systems. Um, 
And so the Global Soil Biodiversity Observatory, the, the mission is to assess, monitor, forecast global soil biodiversity. We want to standardize some protocols. Um, we want not only protocols on measuring, but but on, on practices that are going to implement, that we can implement to improve soil biodiversity. The whole mission of this is to, to put together information that can be brought to decision makers, um, whether it's policymakers or farmers, land use owners, to be able to say, these are the, these are the best um, things that we can do to improve soil biodiversity. And um, this is, is kind of the, the full schema of how the global soil biodiversity works. So it, it's going to be driven by um, at, a, at a country level. Um, so we would approach a country and say, how do you want to um, establish this global soil biodiversity observatory in your country? Um, and then we would have several different tiers of membership where those that are haven't really been doing very much that have limited capacity will start at kind of a base level and and we would build up that capacity um, and we would eventually hopefully work with them over several years to be able to build to where they're measuring the full capacity the full suite of measurements that they would need to measure for um, biological diversity so um I, I don't want to focus too much on what GLOSAB is, but I do want to focus on this whole area in red um, to show that this is where I see that, that NETSAB and GLOSALON are really interacting. And you can see that it's a big chunk of, of what we're doing with GLOSAB. And so the success of, of this Global Soil Biodiversity Observatory really lies in the coordinated efforts of the International Network on Soil Biodiversity and Glossalon in order to harmonize these these practices, these these assessments, these measurements that we're going to be collecting. And so, thank you very much. Um, I, I'm very excited about the opportunity I have to work with uh, and build this Global Soil Biodiversity Observatory, and it is going to rely heavily on on the the participation of of Glossalon. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jacob. Uh, it's uh, very important to us the work, the, the support and the joint work with the colleagues of, of NETSO. Uh, well, uh, now um, we are going to listen to uh, Mr. Sergeius uh, Ustinov, coordinator of the International Network on Soil Pollution who will speak about the opportunities for collaboration between the International Network on Soil Pollution, ESOP, and Glossolan. Uh, they are Sergius, the, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Miriam, for this introduction. Uh, I hope you can hear me well. Well, to all Glossolan participants, very good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to everyone who is joining us today. Um, I hope you can see my screen, which will appear in the full mode in a second. Okay, wonderful. Well, as Miriam said, my name is Sergius Yusinov. I'm the coordinator of the network on INSAB, the International Network on Soil Pollution. And today my focus is to show you the uh, opportunities that we can both work together, both INSAB members and members of the GLOSAN, and what already has been done over the last uh, year or so. So just a quick recap for those who are unfamiliar with what INSUP is focusing on. Well, we were launched very recently, just last year, with the focus to minimize soil pollution and achieving the global goal of zero pollution around the world. As of today, INSUP focuses on the following six main areas of work under each of which various tasks will be carried out to achieve the overall goal, goal minimizing soil pollution. How we do this? Well, we're going to work on improving knowledge in the full cycle of soil pollution. So if you can see here in the graph here, um, the we together, all of our technical networks are part of the land and water division, which is uh, at the Global Soil Partnership. And here we have different uh, networks. And uh, my network on uh, INSOP is coordinated by the technical uh, committee, which uh, focusing on the following six um, working groups, the assessment of soil pollution, mapping soil pollution, monitoring, how we can monitor soil pollution, what practices we can put to remediate soil pollution, what is the linkage between food 
and soil pollution in a sense what soil pollutants affect your crops the most and therefore your human health and finally the interaction between soil and water because these two environmental compartments are very well interlinked with each other the um the the, the network itself is coordinated by the following steering committee so you can see here that we have this hierarchy structure we have the chair the vice chair myself the coordinator and each uh, working group is carried out managed by the leader you can see here that we still have two question marks for a working group on map because we still don't know how we can map soil pollution even if it's possible to map soil pollution and uh, the question mark between soil and water working group because the um the task still needs to be defined for next year so we still we have only four active working groups today now, and uh, last, this year, this summer, we had the first um, INSOP annual meeting during which we discussed and, and prioritized the activities that we want to focus on in the next two years for each working group. For example, for remediation, we would like to advocate for the development of national capacities and strengthen technology transfer for remediation and sustainable management of polluted soils. For food and quality, we would like to advocate for the promotion of soil pollution to be included in the One Health approach and the Global Health Observatory that is for, that is developed by the World Health Organization. Because if you go to WHO website and you open Global Health Observatory indices and indicators, you will not find a single soil pollution indicator there, which is why it's quite important to address this topic from this aspect. For monitoring soil pollution, we would like to advocate for better understanding of national legal instruments on the prevention, monitoring, and remediation of soil pollution. In the um, soil pollution remediation conference that I was in uh, China a couple of weeks ago, we learned that only 10% of the countries around the world has some uh, legal tools, legal instruments for uh, preventing soil pollution, just 10%. So this still needs to be addressed. Assessment Working Group will focus on advocating for the development of SOPs, Standard Operating uh, Procedures, to identify and measure soil pollutants. And I guess that's where the most interesting part comes for Glowsland members, because that's where we can collaborate a lot. Uh, we cannot focus on all soil contaminants, because in this respect, we will be everywhere and nowhere. And therefore, we thought that we should focus on the following contaminants that you can see here on total heavy metals, on bioavailable heavy metals, and on pesticides. And so this is our goal for the next two years, to either um, develop those SOPs for those contaminants, or if they are already developed, review them and see whether they uh, reflect the reality. The KPI for this working group will be that at least one soil laboratory working with the GSP, not only GLOSLAM, majority of them will be GLOSLAM, that's right, but all labs that co collaborate with the Global Soil Partnership from each region is involved in the development of harmonized SOPs. And on a long-term KPI, we would like to see that 80% of soil labs working with the GSP will be aware, at least what we have done, of how to use those SOPs for measuring soil pollutants in the laboratory. This is the table that shows the, the partnership between the two networks. So you can see that uh, we have already a lot of deliverables uh, and objectives here. I'm not gonna go, I'm gonna go through each of them in much more detail. So you see that we have just five objectives and deliverables here. Some of them are already completed as the first two. Some of them are ongoing, like, like the third one. And the last two, four, number four and five, are still planned and um, needs to be uh, um, adjusted. And I leave uh, the last uh, row as empty because I see that there's a lot of opportunities for us to, to grow our partnership. So deliverable one is uh, SOPs on heavy metals. Now, recently, Glossland, as you know, already published two uh, SOPs focusing on heavy metals, and that is quasi-total elements in, in soil by acid digestion, including heavy metals, and soil available micronutrients and heavy metals by DTP extraction method. So uh, we were um, invited, uh, thank you very much to Glossland Steering Committee, who invited the, the INSOP members to review those SOPs and provide their comments for further improvement. So that's why I say this deliverable is already completed early this year. Deliverable number two is the, the build a reagent a guideline. Um, Glossland approached INSOP members to uh, develop or to uh, complement uh, the reagent guidelines by providing the environmental associated risks, as you can see here, highlighted in yellow, and that's what uh, we did 
So we hope that our contribution uh, will uh, make a valuable um, recognition to this reagent uh, guidelines. Deliverable number three is uh, ongoing. Uh, together with Glossolan, INSOP, and also Insolfair, we're developing SOP for measuring phosphate fertilizers in soil because there is a, a, a lot of questions and ongoing debates going on how phosphate fertilizers pollute the soil because they they have heavy metals. And so we copy paste uh, the uh, format of uh, Glossolan SOPs to INSOP SOPs and uh, that task started early this year. We're now in step eight here. You can see the SOP is already written. So we're in the process of internal review and that will be next followed by external review. So if anyone interested to review the SOPs, you're more than welcome to, um, to register your interest with me or with Filippo. For that um, SOP, um, for that SOP, uh, we collected um, um, information from 69 laboratories from 49 countries. So we see a huge interest here. And that includes uh, laboratories and members from INSOP, from Glossland, and Insolfair. So I once again, thank you very much for sharing your information on this um, um, SOP. And uh, recently, just last week, um, I invited also some Glossland members uh, to involve in deliverable number four, developing SOPs for highly hazardous pesticide measurements in the soil. Again, as with uh, SOP for fertilizers, we will do exactly the same approach. Of course, the template for information collection will be amended to reflect the interest of that pollutant. But for now, we're now just starting at the step two, establishing the working groups uh, and the experts who will be uh, the lead author for this SOP on highly hazardous pesticides and who will be the contributing authors. So if you are interested and if you're already measuring uh, the highly hazardous pesticide residues in the soil in your laboratory, I'm inviting you to share uh, this information with us by um, enclosing the information in the template that I will uh, give you information about shortly after my presentation. Uh, again, uh, so INSOP has a lot of initiations, you can see here in, the work, in different working groups. So if you're interested to contribute to one of them, we have a quite busy schedule till the end of this year. You're more than welcome to scan your um, this QR code with your phone number, uh, with your phone and register your interest to one of the following working groups, because this is the only way uh, how I can reach out to you and invite to the upcoming meetings. Well, uh, once again to Glossalan, thank you very much for giving this opportunities and INSOP is looking forward to collaborate in many different activities. Thank you. Thank you very much there, Sergei. It was very, very interesting your presentation and the great uh, job you are doing. It's uh, very important your support on, on this subject. Uh, well, uh, I apologize, uh, but uh, today we need to change all the order of the agenda. Uh, and uh, remember that uh, if you have any question or want to give an opinion or make a contribution, uh, you can put it in the chat. Uh, now uh, we are going to listen to Mr. Jorge Batlesales, uh, chair of INSAS who are going to talk about the work of showing working group of uh, International Network on Salt Affected Soils, INSAS, and Glossolan. Uh, Jorge, uh, you can take the floor, please. Thank you, Chair. Oh, sure. Dear respected colleagues, uh, this is the first time that we meet, so I will make savings in the presentation, not uh, telling about the network as, as a whole, the INSAS, uh, you have the opportunity to know that in details. Uh, just uh, to remind you that this was uh, the start was April uh, 21, and so now uh, we are two years functioning, and, and we are accelerating with activities. And uh, um, well, we have four working groups dealing with different aspects, and and, and when one comes to those meetings. Uh, one can learn, and I see that uh, all we work on soils, and so there are some overlappings in the in the objectives and the, the desideratum of, of several uh, working groups and, and networks, and uh, so it is it is uh, nice to have the opportunity to collaborate, and so I will present my 
the collaboration that we are uh, performing with the Glossoland. And uh, uh, well, the point is that uh, we started with uh, a call for experts uh, willing to uh, participate in the review of the uh, existing and new uh, uh, SLP related specifically to salt affected soils. Uh, because, uh, as you know, salt affected soils uh, have uh, particular problems uh, the derived of the massive uh, concentration of salts on the on the matrix and uh, on this as well it is uh, dependent of on time and so uh, we need to adapt some of the of the analy analyzing uh, methods to this kind of soils and uh, as well uh, developing uh, transfer functions uh, between methods if uh, we should uh, try to exchange data and uh, we are as well um, willing to make capacity building sessions. Uh, we uh, enrolled 23 experts from 13 countries uh, from both networks. And what we did, uh, we already uh, made the review and, uh, of bottom by hot water extraction. There are other methods, but uh, this was finished. PhD determination, that it is seems to be trivial determination, but it is not so much. And uh, after uh, a good discussion, and uh, so the um, adaptation for uh, salt affected soil was also considered in the general method. And now uh, we are uh, under the review of the saturated past extract uh, methodology because uh, many of the recommendations uh, to farmers and, and uh, other uh, interested in, in salt affected soils are based on the saturated past extract analysis. And so it starts with the uh, extract itself. And uh, many people to make uh, time savings uh, use the electrical conductivity measurement in, in a diluted solution one to five and we need to review that. Um, so this is one uh, uh, short objective. But uh, we are in the, in, the, in the pipeline waiting uh, uh, several other uh, measurements that it is the ASP, the, the sodium absorption ratio. The alkalinity in soil saturated paste extract and in general when taking uh, samples in the field because alkalinity is altered by the CO2 pressure and temperature and so we need to fix how to do that in the field and as well in the laboratory immediately. And uh, guidelines on sample collection, storage and disposal. And, and this is common to all of we that work on, on soils. So, but uh, uh, we will do a training specifically on salt affected soils uh, sampling approach because uh, you know that we have a fluorescence and, and then uh, there is uh, people think that, uh, okay, it is, it is uh, proper uh, to, to sample maybe zero to 30 centimeters, 30 to one, but there is a matter of discussion because maybe you should concentrate on, on, on horizons, is are, they are recognized because horizons determine the physical properties and, and salt transfer along the profile and so on. Uh, there are other methodologies of, of analysis of boron that are interesting for us uh, as well. Uh, in many times, uh, the, um, the difficulties in, in the soil salinity are anticipated because of the observation of the leaves that uh, in, in plants growing on salt affected soils that uh, show uh, deficiency or, or uh, toxicity because of boron. And uh, something that it is critical, it is the soil particle size analysis that, you know, in most salt affected soils, this, uh, partic this uh, particle, mineral particles, they, they uh, settle because of the high concentration of electrolytes. And so the, to, to make later uh, modeling uh, using pedotransfer function uh, based on uh, particle size analysis uh, can be fake. And so it is very important to uh, uh, fix uh, a standard methodology for this, uh, this kind of analysis. And uh, uh, well, um, yesterday we, I, I will add, I will add something. 
some other some other info. Yesterday we uh, had in, in the network we had a, a roundtable uh, that uh, dealing with soil health, and I would like to add here uh, the concern about the soil biology. I mean uh, soil biology aspects. Because yesterday, and under the discussion, it was uh, highlighted that the difference in between soil quality and and, uh, and soil health it could be based uh, on the observation and the bi biological properties. And so I wonder if we could start as well uh, to establish a SAP on the soil respiration. That would be a basic, a basic measurement, uh, just a start. Or maybe uh, later with enzymatic activities or, or, or the, what the specialist uh, will uh, recommend, uh, especially for the salt affected soils, because salt affected soils are reputed to be unhealthy soils or uh, at risk of, of, of uh, how to be uh, degraded. And so, uh, biolog biological activity it is important to measure as, as one of the of the indicators and uh, as well because uh, salt affected soils are irrigated in many places with wastewater that could have emergent uh, pollutants and we wonder if this will damage the biological activity in the, in the soil so i i want to add that and uh, it, it is uh, there are there are uh, there was the announcement of, of several meetings uh, today uh, up beside the uh, scientific interest, there are uh, added uh, um, interest because Florence is a nice city with uh, full of art and uh, also <clears throat> Cappadocia it was described very well and, and it is very interesting and I was motivated but I, I should tell uh, our uh, Turkish colleague that she, he forgot to, to mention that uh, Cappadocia is the motherland of St. George, you know, this this knife. And uh, uh, well, uh, I am motivated to go there. And, and I would like to, to make a early announcement that we will have a, a meeting in at, at Valencia by middle May. Uh, still not fixed the terms, but uh, soon will be. Uh, dealing with uh, salt affected soils, of course, because it is uh, in, in between the network. And uh, it is uh, a joint uh, meeting with the action cost uh, existing and the International Union of Soil Sciences. And uh, Valencia, as well as uh, Cappadocia and Florencia, has uh, a lot of, of uh, fun to offer and a nice place. So I encourage you to uh, participate in this open uh, meeting that we will have uh, with uh, field discussions and uh, before and after the meeting. Thank you, Chair. That's all. Thank you very much there, Jorge. It's uh, very important to ask the, the support of the colleagues of uh, INSAS. And uh, it was uh, very interesting, the discussion that took place uh, yesterday in the room table about the quality and health of salt affected soils. Uh, and um, we have some of the SOPs on biological measurements, uh, for example, respiration, microbial biomass or microbial enzymes. And uh, we could share with uh, INSAS to, to review if you agree. Hey, um... Mm -hmm. Well, we, we will welcome any any initiative and recommendations. And uh, actually, I invite you all. I will I will type my email in on the chat. I invite uh, all you uh, who could uh, exchange ideas and give recommendations on the uh, soil health indicators uh, that, uh, but especially in, in in salt affected soils, because we recognized yesterday mm -hmm. that that. Uh, the properties of salt affected soils are time transient, and, and well, uh, we mm -hmm. should uh, take um, additional considerations. So you are welcome to make such uh, such uh, 
council of uh, for exchanges ideas yes thank you mm -hmm. and uh, jorge i can see um, a question in the chat uh, um, anna paz said uh, how can we receive news from insas working group uh, maybe you well uh, you, can. You, you can you can do uh, uh, two things uh, one is is uh, writing uh, to me or to the coordinator i will type the two emails in the mm -hmm. in the chat uh, when i will finish or speak and uh, you can do something better that is enroll to the insas mm -hmm. uh, network and participate in the activities we have uh, for working groups dealing with the thank you filippo uh, uh, dealing with the uh, mapping uh, with the indicators with the relations uh, with uh, waters and as well with the uh, in indicators and uh, laws and, and so the uh, land tenure and, and the uh, governance so i think that you will find interesting points that uh, as, as i i tell you uh, we sometimes speak about the same f f but from our uh, particular interest mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you very much, Jorge. Well, um, today the the first will be the last. <laughs> and now we will have the pleasure to listen to Miss uh, Vinisa Sainz and Mr. Yushin Tong, coordinators of uh, Insolfer. They are going to talk to us about a launch of the International Network on Soil Fertility and Fertilizers in soil farm, formerly uh, INFA. Uh, so, Vinisa or Yuchin, I don't know, uh, please uh, take the floor. Thank you very much, Miriam. So. Thank you very much for the invitation to you and Filippo. So I'll be sharing with you uh, some updates of the launch of the International Network on Soil Fertility and Fertilizers. Um, um, some of this uh, information, it's uh, relevant because uh, the working group three has become infra, so I will explain in a little bit. The coordinators of this network on behalf of the GSP are Mr. Yushin Tong and myself. And the chairs of INFA are Mr. Wedley uh, Feldman and uh, Gerardo Ojeda. So uh, um, a quick recap, um, on July of this year, we had the launch of the network uh, with more than 1,000 participants where we explained all the objectives and the goal. So all this information is available in the website, the recordings and the presentations in case you want to, to take a look at it. Uh, but then I would like to to um, uh, do a quick uh, recap on the um, goals of the network. So the goals are the adoption and implementation of sustainable um, and balanced soil fertility management, ensure global food security through sustainable use uh, of fertilizers and promote soil fertility, avoidance of the underuse, misuse, and overuse of fertilizers, the reduction of the environmental and health impacts of unsustainable fertilizer use and soil management practices, evaluation and improvement of the safety and the quality of fertilizers, and the promotion of the soil for nutrition policy at national and global levels. So why the network? Because it is uh, in line and helps to fulfill the sustainable uh, development goals. Also because the society is demanding safer and more nutritious food, but nutritious food starts with a nourished soil. So we need to preserve soil fertility in a sustainable manner. manner. Uh, food we need food production, but without the externalities derived from unsustainable crop practices, mainly greenhouse gases emissions and uh, environmental pollution. We need nutrition without human, animal and crop uh, hazards. Uh, so my colleague Serge just before has talked about the importance of the evaluating the safety of fertilizers that we are adding to soils. Some of them might have a hazardous materials that like um, heavy metals. We also need to be consistent with a circular economy and agri-food systems 
with a low carbon footprint. That means that we can reuse um, and recycle nutrient sources, not just using the traditional nutrient sources. So we can use wastewater, sewage sludge, biosolids, etc. So all the examples that you are looking at here. So uh, the network is uh, um, one of the most important tasks of the network is a compilation of the sustainable crop, pra crop practices because currently they are scattered and disorganized. So the network is going to also address this. Then uh, also it's very important that farmers, technicians, and laboratories need technical support and capacity development. And soil fertility management is directly and indirectly related with all these needs. So uh, back on the sim Global Symposium on Soils for Nutrition held in 2000 and 2022, we had uh, six general recommendations, which are map and monitoring soil nutrients and soil fertility, develop innovative approaches uh, to enhance fertilizer use efficiency and keeping soil fertility and soil health. But then the recommendation number three is the assess quality and safety of all nutrient sources applied to soils to avoid or reduce environmental contamination and also health problems. We have other uh, recommendations uh, from which um, that, that led to the launch of the International Network on Soil Fertility and Fertilizers or in Soil Fair to address nutrient imbalances and also to promote the adoption of soils for nutrition concept um, for making healthy and fertile soils by 2030. So what is next? Now we need to go to the operability of the network. So the first meeting of the working groups uh, will be held on next week. So you are cordially invited. Uh, we are in, in the process of the website construction, uh, but we also need to establish the collaboration with other networks and institutions. And of course, a very important partner is uh, Glossoland, but also INSOP and other networks of the Global Soil Partnership. So um, um, I will give all this information to Filippo so you can also have this invitation to the working group meetings that will take place on from 27 to 29 November. It's important because we will um, um, define and endorse the goals, the work plan, the governance, and establish the technical committees, et cetera, all the things that you know, because you are a very well-established uh, network. So we will have three working groups. Working group one um, will have the meeting on the day one, it's soil fertility and nutrient monitoring system. Day two, we will have the working group two meeting is sustainable soil fertility and fertilizer management. And the day three, we will celebrate the working group three meeting, fertilizer safety and quality assessment and the debriefing of the meeting uh, sessions. So I will not uh, go into uh, more detail. Uh, I could uh, share with you the, the concept note, but we have these three working groups. Working group, group one is soil fertility and nutrient monitoring system. Working group two, soil fertility and fertilizer management. But I would like to go in more detail of the working group three, fertilizer safety and quality assessment. So uh, the objectives of this working group three uh, are in response to one of the recommendations of the Global Symposium on Soils for Nutrition, which is that the quality of fertilizers and their bioavailability ensure that fertilizers and recycled nutrient sources comply with quality and safety standards. So these activities and these recommendations uh, have been uh, addressed by uh, the International Network of Fertility uh, Fertilizer Analysis, so since this network has already been established and is addressing this subject, it became working group three of in soil fair uh, that is addressing um, and monitoring and improving the quality and safety of organic and inorganic fertilizers and other nutrient sources. And yes, is also an excellent vehicle for the implementation of the code of conduct for the sustainable use and management of fertilizers. So, um, of course, the potential collaborations are, potential and actual collaborations are uh, with INSOP and with Glossolan. Future collaborations that we are envisioning 
are with uh, NETSO. So very briefly, I will update you on the activities that we are uh, conducting in the working group three, which is the um, SOP harmonization. Um, now with uh, organic and inorganic fertilizers, uh, the determination of total nitrogen by the Sheldahl method, total nitrogen by the combustion method, total phosphorus by acid digestion, total potassium by water soluble, and sample uh, preparation. Uh, then we are also, we will carry capacity development uh, activities, uh, specifically on quality assurance and sample preparation. We will have a, a webinar series in 2024, and we are preparing for a ring test, our first ring test in, in the next year, um, once we are have harmonized and published the SOPs that we are harmonize, harmonize, harmonizing. Uh, we have collaborations with INSOP and Glossolan uh, with heavy for the heavy metal determination. My colleagues are just already talked about that. We are um, going to address also other other topics. So if your laboratory is performing fertilizer analysis, please join uh, the working group three of Insulfer. Uh, we are also um, going to address this topic in more detail in next year, because this is uh, closely linked with the ring test that we will have in 2024. So this is what I wanted to share with you and also invite you to, to join uh, in Solfer, um, there is not much time now, but if you have any questions or comments, I'll be able to, I'll be happy to to answer that in the in the chat. <laughs> Thank you, Philip. Thank you. Thank you very much, Benisa. Thank you very much. Uh, it's very interesting and and important uh, your your work. Thank you. Well, uh, I would like to, to thank again all the colleagues for sharing their works. And I invite to you to contact uh, with the coordinators if you are uh, interested in make contribution on some of these subjects. Uh, Filippo include uh, all the links in the chat. And also uh, we share all your contribution there uh, with our colleagues. Uh, well, thank you very much to all of you. Thanks again. Thanks again, Miriam, uh, for your for your for moderating this session. Thanks to all presenters. I think we will continue, hopefully, fruitfully, to collaborate with all the other networks in terms of the analysis of certain sort of parameters. I am sorry we are a little bit in delay with the agenda. Uh, so we move straight to the next session, which is on the harmonization of standard operating procedures. And we will start with uh, Mrs. Penny Van Egmond from ISRIC, who is currently in another conference. But uh, I thank her for finding the time to present uh, today with us. I will now give the floor to Nukmane Subanang, who is also in the steering committee of Glossola, who will moderate this session. So, Mark, all right to you. Thank you, Filippo. So in this session, actually, as you may know, Gosolan start to make the harmonization of the standard operation procedure. And uh, among all of this, uh, you will, from this session, you will hear about, about the recap of the SOP that we already harmonized and some that have the problem when during our harmonization. In the same time, we also always have the problem about the ISO SOP and also Gosolan SOP. So Fanny will present some uh, comparison about the Gosolan SOP and the, also the, the ISO standard SOP. And finally, I will share you about the guideline on the reagent disposal in very short information. Okay, so may I uh, give the floor to Fanny to, to share her presentation now? Thank you, Fanny. Over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Nok, and, and I'm grateful to, to be here. I'm trying to share the screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, okay. Um, so so maybe to, to slightly disappoint you, I, I don't, I did not do a comparison yet between ISO and Glossolan, but I, I would like to uh, to raise the, the issue and to ask if, if as Glossolan, uh, we can pay attention to this because it, it 
turns out to be more and more relevant also in, in my direct uh, work field and, and beyond also in Europe. So uh, it would be great if we can, um, well, pay some attention to this basically. <clears throat> And the question uh, that I have is is ISO standards versus the global standards, how far apart are the SOPs uh, and the ISO standards and uh, and how can we go about this? Um, so I thought it would be useful to just refresh your, uh, I'm, I'm sure all of you know this, but just to uh, identify the differences uh, between the two organizations and, and trends. Uh, so the ISO has been around for a long time. Uh, they also bring together experts to share knowledge and develop voluntary, uh, as this, I copied this from their website, consensus-based and market-relevant international standards. Uh, they do have a large audience and uh, a lot of countries, committees and, uh, and field, they really go beyond soil uh, as well. But the crucial thing is that they ask a payment for the use of their standards. And for me, this is really a, a big, um, well, roadblock or, or blocking factor that it, it makes it less accessible and uh, it does not align with open science principles. So it, it's an increasing problem, I would say. At the same time, we do, um, uh, for another type of ISO certification, uh, this is really a quality stamp for labs. So in, in that sense, there is still value. Um, well, I, I don't need to explain this, but I thought it would be fair to, to include this uh, here as well. Uh, so Glowstone is newer, but it has a huge network. And this is, I think, a great strength. Um, I'm not sure if the ISO is represented like this. Uh, so we reach a lot of more people. Um, there's a lot of attention also to to, uh, to SOPs, of course, but also to quality assurance, etc. cetera. Um, and it's a community harmonization effort. But given this, I can imagine that a lot of the labs that participate and work on the SOPs, they also um, probably used ISO standards um, uh, as a starting point, maybe for the, the procedures that they have in their lab. So, yeah, I, I don't really know uh, how much of, of the ISO standards or of local lab standards end up in the Glossoland SOPs. Uh, this will be a question, yeah. uh, but I think one crucial point that is really a strength of Glossland uh, is that the standards are available for free so that they are uh, by and for the community uh, itself. Um, this the, the issue was uh, raised again. I'm sorry, I'm going to move location because there's a lot of people talking in my vicinity. Um, within Europe, we are facing uh, an extra challenge on this where we have uh, a directive coming up. Um, so a law for soil monitoring and resilience uh, where there is a prescription for the amount of soil indicators that are, need to be measured, so soil properties and how they should be measured. Um, so which lab methods have to be used per indicator or per property. Um, and what is very interesting is that usually in those lists, the ISO standards are always mentioned, but now also a Glossoland standard and Glossoland SOP is in the proposal for a law in Europe, which makes it much more uh, important and relevant also for us to understand how these two are related. And it, it, it's actually a, a really good and really nice achievement of Glossoland. Um, so that also raises the question when labs want to choose using Glossolan or ISO, how, how far apart are they? Um, are they largely the same? Is there a crucial or substantial elements that differ and when to choose which one? Um, so it would be very beneficial if for a lot of these kind of regula regulations or other uh, elements, we could say, well, we follow Glossolan SOPs um, because also we can, open it up, but at the same time, there's really a question uh, of following ISO, um, usually by law or in the, like in this case also for a lot of elements. So so how to go about this? So basically the, my question is, uh, is this something that is relevant for Glossland to do? Can we do a mapping? Is there an understanding in in the, the network on, on these different questions? And can we provide some guidance uh, on this? So I have more questions than answers at this point, um, but I, I was hoping we could have a discussion on this. Okay, thank you, Penny, for your sharing. Actually, I think that uh, the way that we have, have making the harmonization of the SOP is a, a little bit different from the ISO because the Coastland SOP is the button-up uh, and also the inclusive 
approach why the why the ISO is not the same, and also we have uh, our SOP is uh, like uh, mostly we are gather from information from the lab that have practiced on this, so it's a uh, more easy to visibility. I mean that the more lab we will follow up on the coastline. And I'm very happy also that uh, Fenisha asked about that. Uh, our coastline method is already accepted to be one of the chosen or alternative method that mentioned in the in the EU uh, project. So now I would like to uh, open the floor in case that you have some uh, suggestion on the way that we should uh, do the work with the ISO. Maybe we could have uh, some uh, cooperative study between the uh, ISO SOP and also Kosolan SOP. So uh, I open the uh, floor for the discussion. If someone would like to share the opinion. Is there anyone who has comments on this? Would we'll like to share your opinion on this? Use the chat, raise your hand. Hi. <clears throat> Please. Yeah, uh, maybe I can have uh, a short comment. My name is Ana Paz. I'm from INIAV in Portugal. Um, well, I just wanted to comment that when I saw the, 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 the topic of, of this uh, short talk, I was very interested directly and I wanted to listen because it is something that we had thought about in our lab. We have been trying to update our methods and we are always looking at the, the, the newest FAO standard operation procedures. And we have been having this question of how they differ with the, with the ISO and which ones shall we say that we follow and how much do they differ? So all the questions that Fanny raised, I must say that we as a lab have raised ourselves. So I think that it sounds like it would be a, a very interesting and useful exercise to, to, to actually um, see how much they would differ and hopefully establish the 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 FAO uh, standard operation procedures as a, as a recognized uh, standard and it was very interesting this this example that was shown because of course it's very very important also for us that they are uh, open and we can share them and we can um, <clears throat> access them very easily without constraints and many labs have them they can't just buy an iso uh, standards that easily sometimes so that was my comment just to to stress that i think it, it's it's a, a really interesting uh, exercise i think thank you anna uh, i i i think that this is a very good uh, exercise that we should uh, compare between the technical working group that maybe take uh, up this topic to make a good uh, starting with one uh, method because now you can see that now many country is working on the soil health monitoring something like this so it could be nice that we could propose the method that have uh, harmonized or uh, have comparative study between the iso sop and also for the accreditation of the lab also, because uh, they also can use, because for the moment I, I heard that some lab, they, they think that uh, they can only accredit or make the validation with only the ISO standard. But actually, even the Gosulan standard, we also can make the validation with what we would like to do for the accreditation also. So, uh, uh, we we do not uh, prepare for the poll for this question, but I think that if if you agree that we would like to work on the comparative between the ISO standard and the fossil land standard, maybe we can set up a group of the committee or technical group to work on that and making a validation between these two methods. So if uh, you agree with this uh, proposal, maybe you can. A uh, type yes no something like this in in the in the chat box. Thank you very much. So because uh, we have very yes, you would like to 
Yeah, yeah, maybe we can launch a poll very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So why do why during uh Filippo Pipe a poll? Maybe if you have something that would like to share your opinion, you also can uh, put it in the chat box so that uh we can uh answer your question. Maybe even in addition, um, uh, what is interesting to know is within the EU law that is now proposed, mm -hmm. validated transfer functions are allowed between ISO. So it would be great if, if we can not only map how far ISO and GLOSLAN are apart, but also if we can develop validated transfer functions between yeah. uh, the ISO uh, methods and the GLOSLAN SOPs. Uh, because that then that allows labs to follow GLOSLAN SOPs uh, to do their monitoring. So then it's still a question when to choose which one, um, yeah. but that would really help a lot of European labs at least. And I don't know other, other continents. I, I cannot speak for those continents, obviously, but uh, that, that would be a great uh, initiative, I think, if we could do that as close land. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for proposing, no. Yeah. Thank you, Penny. I think that the first step is that we need to make the comparative between both metaphors. And if they have something that is different, then we need to make a transfer function later. Mm. Is hands up? Yes, from, uh, yes, please. Odipo? Odipo? Yeah, yeah, I was saying that uh, ISO has been around for a long time mm -hmm. and well established. And uh, they do auditing, and it costs. So I I think we should agree to continue with the ISO and also take on the Glossolan and build confidence in it over time. Mm -hmm. But I guess that uh, that will require uh, incurring some resources mm -hmm. because if you if you if you want to use Glossolan for it to compete with ISO, then uh, it has to be valid. So there has to be yes. some kind of a, a process of a yes. validation yes. so that uh, things are going on right. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and I think that comes at some cost. So let's agree to go on with ISO, but also build uh, Glossolan, but know that it will be at some cost. From from the survey that we have made as a global survey, we can see that actually the testing method is not very found. We don't have too many methods that different, but the difference is the procedure itself. So that's, uh, I think that uh, validation is the value to, to do it, to, to make the confidence for the people who would like to change, because uh, you can uh, see that many ISO SOP is uh, launched long time ago because now most of the publication from the ISO they they mostly public in the new technology. <laughs> what we are doing now is something is uh, like a, like chemistry like organic carbon. I think that like both there and back ISO is already launched this uh, SOP long time ago and now they are focusing on the uh, combustion method something like this. So I think for me I think that is good but uh. Anyone that you want to share about this, you can put it in the chat and then we can uh, consider making a group uh, and discuss further action on this and come back to make our member feel more confident for the board method that we can use alternative. Thank you. So because we have short term, maybe uh, if, if someone have, still have the question, you can put it in the chat box and then we will reverse to uh, shortly later. But uh, next, I would like to invite Filippo no, to present about the recap of the SOP that we already done and also the uh, purpose of the endorsement of the SOP in the near future. Filippo, please. Yes, yes, no, actually, I prepared a short uh, poll I would like to share with all of you. Just mm -hmm. to follow up the discussion we just had. So first question is if we would agree to start this exercise that uh, was proposed by Fanny basically uh, and explain it in, uh, in the last presentation and supported so far. So to start this comparison exercise between Grossland SOPs and ISO protocols. Um, furthermore, if you would be interested in developing transfer functions between Grossland SOPs and ISO protocols, 
And then if we should do the same with the national protocols, so between Grosor and SOPs and the national protocols that sometimes are developed within your countries. I'm wrote, I, I read like the comment from Daniel from Brazil that was suggesting that, for instance, I think also this is very mm -hmm. useful. Mm -hmm. So please vote so we can move forward. Okay, please uh, vote. There are a few seconds left. Okay, I'm about to close the poll. Great. So these are the results. So definitely, yes, we will uh, start this comparison exercise. Um, so thanks again, Fanny, for proposing that. I would suggest to uh, share this proposal with the Glossolan Technical Committee. For those who are not familiar with the Glossolan structure, there is a, a technical committee um, which has members from all regions. So I will share the invitation among these people to start this exercise, but if there is anyone here who would like to join this exercise, please do contact me and I will uh, put you in the loop and we will uh, involve you in this comparison. Uh, I think it would be very interesting to, to do that. So please consider that. Uh, let me know if you would like to, if you're not interested in the technical committee of Blueson, I would like to uh, join this exercise, let us know. And especially regarding national protocols, we will lace with the national reference labs in order to proceed with that. Now, I'm sorry for the delay again, but thanks again, uh, Fanny. We just move forward in the next presentation. is about a recap of the SOPs done so far by Glossolan. So I will try to make it as fast as possible. Um, these are, uh, as you know, we start harmonizing SOPs and validating this. Also, it was a good point it was raised. Uh, we validate them through the proficiency test of Glossolan because whenever Glossolan organizes a proficiency test, we ask the use of we ask laboratories participating in the exercise to use the Glossolan SOPs. Why? Because we have to ensure the data are um, comparable. So we these are the the, the main uh, reasons why we start Glossolan started harmonizing uh, standard operating procedures because we need to accurate precise data reliable data, comparable data, interpretable basic data. So uh, starting from this, um, the SOP concept was developed within Glossolan uh, four years ago. Uh, we started doing some uh, harmonization of basic parameters, chemical parameters. This is an example back in the days in 2019, 2018, when the Wolfram Black SOP was published, 67 laboratories from 50 to 52 countries provide informations. And in those days, uh, Glossolan counted like 200 labs only. Now we have uh, over a thousand. So now the participation is much larger, but it was really nice to see the participation from all over the world. Uh, and the, the SOPs are, are, I think, a very valid document because they ensure the replicability of, of, of measurement and provide not only step-by-step -step instructions, but also information health and safety quality assurance and quality control. And in some cases also sampling guidelines, for instance, book density. And as Fanny and Nock point out, these documents are available for free on the Glossolan webpage. Um, and also, so the bottom-up approach and the availability of the protocols, I think are one of the, some of the main difference between Glossolan SOPs and ISO standards. Moreover, they are available in multiple languages, which, which uh, facilitate the adoption of the SOPs. So this is our, uh, this is like the workflow of the harmonization. So the working group is established, then there are rules among the working group, among leaders, uh, supporting authors from different regions, a review panels is established. Then this matrix, which basically is an Excel file, is circulated among those members in order to collect information on the procedures they adopt in their own laboratories. These are compiled together first at the regional level and then at global level in order to come up then with a text, which is then reviewed and published and hopefully then translated. We follow a template. So all Glossolan SOPs look the same. So they have the same structure, the same, uh, the same contents inside. Um, and we try not only to provide indeed step-by-step uh, -step instructions, but also information on the, 
on the on the quality control to be done for each procedure and health and safety regulations. And whenever we have more than one methods for the same parameter, uh, to measure the same parameter, we try to compare them in order to provide laboratories information um, which allow them to um, decide which method to choose. So technology, time, environmental risk, health and safety for the staff in the lab and so on. Again, we make them accessible through translating them, uh, making videos, uh, webinars, and all this information are available on, on the Glutman webpage. If you click on the capacity building webpage, you will be able to access all the recording of the webinars done so far, but also for some SOPs, we have uh, video recordings on, on YouTube. Uh, this is an example on how SOPs can be translated not only into UN official languages. So in English, Spanish, French, Arabic, Russian, and Chinese, but also to the national languages. So I encourage you, whenever you are interested to translate the Glossal SOPs into your local languages, to please contact us and we can do. This is an example from the Thail from Thailand. So they translate the Glossal SOPs. These are the, those from PH, Work in Black, and Re1 and Re2 for Phosphorus into Thai language. So this is possible, we can do that together. Uh, as mentioned by the previous presenters, all these SOPs are results of a review and a joint collaboration with the other GSP technical networks. So NetSob, uh, support, people from NetSob are supporting Glossola in developing uh, uh, SOPs for biological indicators and people from INSAS in reviewing those for related to salt-affected soils. At the same with INSOP, they support us for the SOPs for heavy metals and pollutants. This is the last SOP we published. This was done two months ago. The last SOP is about is for soil book density. Seeing their method, you can download it from the Glossolan webpage. Uh, and this is an overview, an overview of the Glossolan SOPs harmonized so far. Those in bold are published and available on the Glossolan webpage. So th those in bold are, are there, done. We're, the, the working is done. But we will continue working on them because we consider these SOPs as living documents, meaning that we constantly review them on a, a regular basis or whenever it is necessary. I'll give you an example. Last year, together with INSAS, we decided to review the Glossal SOP for pH. And we did it. Now we just have to publish it, but it's there. And for instance, uh, someone now is reviewing the work claim black SOP. Why? Because it was uh, a request to review that to reduce the amount of reagents used. So this is an overview. So again, as I mentioned the first day, we are in delay with SOPs because maybe we are too ambitious. We put so many in our working list, um, in our to-do list. So we have some delays, but we are about to publish um, at least those that, which are, whose harmonization started a long time ago. These are the SOPs from 2021. So in two years ago, Glossal members agreed to work on several uh, procedures. Some of them were published, some others not yet. So this will be prioritized. We should uh, publish these SOPs as soon as possible because we faced several several um, delays uh, and issues with them, but we want to finalize them as soon as possible. So particular organic carbon, boron, which is under publication, for instance, uh, medic tree, particle size distribution, microbial biomass, these are the top priority for us now. So I put in this light pale orange, the chemical parameters in blue, the physical ones and in green, the biological ones for you to better follow the, the categories. Then I will now show you those we agreed on um, in last year, in 2022, uh, basically. So we, we were supposed to work on all these parameters for chemical analysis. So far, we started only with organic matter. Some of these delays is, is because there is a lack of human capacity here in uh, in the GSB Secretariat. So there is not enough human capacity to follow up this exercise. So hopefully soon the staff will be reinforced so that someone uh, will take care of the of this. I cannot manage everything alone. So hopefully soon we will be able to, to finalize this harmonization. So this is for the chemical parameters and these are the physical and biological parameters that um, we are we are working on, basically. Uh, as you can see, water retention curve and particle density, the matrix is finalized. So soon we will uh, share them to collect information. Microbial enzymes activity is almost ready. I mean, the text is ready. We just have to do the final review and publish it. So this will be a great achievement. And then uh, we will continue with the others. Then these are the proposal we collected last year. 
so we should work on them in, in 2023 but we lack some uh, some uh, again we didn't start yet because we we are so we are so many previous SOPs to finalize so these are the SOPs also that are in the already in the working list of 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 Glossolan. Um, and now I would like to share with you to open a discussion a bit about these year proposals. So in the last weeks, we held the meetings with the regional soil laboratory network. So most of the members agreed to focus more on the finalization of the SOPs I showed you that are in the waiting list uh, and focus more attention to the translation of the SOPs. So for instance, we have all SOPs in English, but only a few of them are translated in, in the other UN official languages. So we should start from uh, from this, to translate more SOPs into French for all the labs uh, from the Francophone countries in, in, in the African region, for instance, uh, in Spanish for all the members of Latsolan and Portuguese. We have many labs speaking Portuguese, not only from Portugal, of course, but also from Brazil, from Mozambique, from South Tome, from Capo Verde, from Angola, and they ask us about this to overcome the language barrier. So definitely we will work this year to translate the Guzman SOPs in French, Spanish, and Portuguese. Hopefully we can do it for Arabic and uh, Chinese as well. But again, if you need any support to translate the Guzman SOPs in your national language, we can do that, no problem, just let us know. And also uh, we should, um, some requests were received to put more efforts in reviewing Glossal and SOPs, especially World Clean Black, Electrical Conductivity, and others, uh, with the support of the other GSP technical networks. Again, we did it already for PH, we just have to continue with the others. And of course, whenever we, we review the, the SOPs, we should include the validation data, meaning that we should provide why this methodology were, not only why the methodology was revised, but the proof that the, the new version is, 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 is validated. Um, so we collect some more uh, proposal from this year about the saturated hydraulic conductivity using the constant head method and consider other alternative methods for those SOPs that are already harmonized. So again, um, and from other SOP, other networks, we received the proposal to work on total soluble salt, exchangeable sodium percentage and uh, sodium absorption ratio. Uh, these were mostly from, from MINSAS, of course. So these all these SOPs are in our working list. If you would agree, I would suggest not to add new SOPs, but to prioritize those that we have already in our working list, focus more on translating and reviewing the SOPs that, especially those that have been harmonized in the previous, in the first years of those run so five, six years ago. Why? Because this can be updated a bit maybe. Uh, I would like to have a, um, a um, look at the chat if there is any any um, any comments. Um, but also there is I don't know if someone would like to uh, take the floor if you have any comments. Normally this is a very hot item uh, within the in the in the Gosan meeting. Um, but also we like to to find a consensus on this request. So to focus more on the pending SOPs. The translation and the review, I also have another poll who I would like to launch with you. So I can ask you to vote now whether you would agree to focus uh, next year, so 2024, mostly on the finalization of the SOPs, which are pending, the translation of the SOPs into the other languages, starting from French, Spanish, and Portuguese, and review of the SOPs, which have been already harmonized by Glossolan and published over the last year. And uh, if you have any other suggestions or you would like to add new SOPs, please write in the chat your proposals. You can take the floor and we will continue doing that. We can consider your proposal. Yeah, we close the poll now. Yeah, the majority is reached. So 95% of the people agree with this. So we will mostly focus on that. But uh, I'm wondering whether there are some comments in the chat about any any particular uh, SOPs or any. If you have any comments, 
uh, on this. Let us know. You can raise your hand. Or you can write in the chat. We are looking forward to hear from you. Let us know. Otherwise, we will uh, continue working on the on as as agreed. So again, many of you um, joined the working groups of some SOPs already one two years ago. Uh, sorry for the silence, but hopefully we will be able to start again the harmonization for those SOPs. So mm -hmm. I think we agree on that. Mm -hmm. So we can proceed. I will give you the floor back, Nock. Thanks again. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Filippo. So now I will very uh, shortly present you about the last presentation about the guideline on the reagent disposal. Actually, this document is a uh, uh, established because uh, we are awareness about the because uh, the people who are working in the lab mostly you have more contact with the reagent every day and also you have make the best disposal and it is very important that you need to understand how to dispose directly safety contaminant to the soil and the lab reagent and waste after your lab use and follow the concept procedure correct procedure so this uh, guideline have starting in uh, a group of the uh, working group in the coastal land and also working and collaborate with the INSOP joint meeting during the December 20th, uh, the, during the December. So we agree to work together on this uh, guideline on soil and reagent disposal. So the uh, template of this disposal is already started and have working on this is uh, nearly finished. And then we will, we will uh, change this to the PDF file and then we will share to the people to make a review and then make a publication on that. So uh, if, if you, if you uh, agree, uh, maybe you can, uh, if you would like to provide some suggestion on this. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry that I did not put it in the, in the presentation mode. <clears throat> because uh, Wait, we cannot see the screen yet. You yes, want me yes, to... yes. Because uh, very large. Uh, that's why I would like to be charged out very late. <clears throat> so I just show you the the slide that uh, we we have uh, prepared. I hope you can see our slide. So you can you can see that from the slide we have put uh, many items. We have put also the how how you can uh, correct the reagent with cannot uh, correct it with the uh, like incompatible layer material and also how you can do it with the environmental so associate. This uh, we are working on this. Uh, the first part is working by the coastal and working group and then uh, for the environmental base this uh, is uh, working by the INSOP that will support us for that. So this is just uh, to, to give you the information that we starting to make awareness about the reagent disposal so that uh, we are all work safety in the lab. So uh, anyone would like to uh, comment or add some suggestion to improve this, we are welcome for that. So just uh, maybe, maybe I can add, uh, this document was prepared like some months ago by Glossolan and Insop. Now we have just to put in a nice uh, <laughs> uh, format, but then we will present it very soon. So we would like also to know if you feel that that will be useful. So again, these are guidelines. So now to properly dispose reagents in the laboratory. Uh, I think we... No, we did not put the poll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have a poll actually. So we can yeah. share the poll. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, we would like to know if you have any guidelines in your laboratory. So the options are, um, yes, we have guidelines on reagents disposal and we are keep fully control on that. Yes, we have the guidelines, but we partially implement it as there is a problem linked to the needed uh, financial resources. Yes, we had and partly implement it as the problem is linked to the technical capacity. The fourth option that there is there are guidelines, but you have only partially implemented because there is 
there are some issues linked to uh, the lack, for instance, of an external service provider, like a company who can come to collect your, your agents. Uh, then, yes, you have guidelines, but you not follow them because of the lack of either capacity. Yes, you have a guidelines, but you don't follow the guidelines because of uh, there is no external providers to come and collect the reagents. Or no, we don't have any guidelines and you find this document very useful. Uh, no. Um, you don't have the, 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 the any any guidelines and you find it very important, very important uh, but you need training to implement these guidelines. Last option. Uh, no, you don't have the guidelines, but uh, you don't think it's important to properly dispose the reagents after use. So many options, but hopefully you will find the one that best fits your scenario. Okay, we reached the majority, mm -hmm. so let me close the poll. Mm -hmm. And these are the results. So there are basically two, two groups. Some labs have guidelines and have fully control in the disposal of the reagents. Uh, but let's go down to the second um, most voted options. 28% of you say that you don't have any guidelines and you find this very important. So there's a lack of guidelines, I guess, in some countries. And then there is many other uh, scenarios. For instance, many people are saying that there are guidelines, but there, there, is, there are some issues linked to the financial uh, resources, to any the capacity or external uh, service providers. Well, uh, thanks for answering the poll. I'm taking note of the results. Yeah. So maybe Filippo, we have, we are very late for that, no? but uh, we are welcome for some uh, discussion or comment for our topic. Yeah, maybe let's take a few minutes if there is any contribution to this uh, last discussion about SOPs. Mm -hmm. So as agreed, so the last um, last decision is that we will focus mostly on the finalization of the SOPs that are pending, translating mm -hmm. them and reviewing some of them. In the meantime, we will launch this disposal uh, guidelines on regions disposal. Uh, and if there is any, we will also, of course, organize some training capacities on that. So building capacity on the use of such reagents disposal. And then uh, um, we will call uh, we launch a call among the Glossoland Technical Committee to uh, start an exercise on comparison between Glossoland SOPs and ISO standards and protocols. Of course, this can be done also in the national level. So by comparing Glossoland SOPs and the national protocols, and this should be done by the national reference labs at the national scale. Is there any comment on this? Any remarks? Any question? Everything is clear? Well, again, thanks for being with us today as well. Uh, sorry for the delay in the agenda. Thanks again, Nock, for uh, moderating the session. Um, thanks to all presenters, really. I think it was really interesting to, to listen to the proposals and to the ongoing uh, collaboration with the other networks. Tomorrow, we will start by reporting some capacity building activities done in Grosolan over the last year in different regions, in, in Arfilab, in Rosolan, in, uh, and, and, and elsewhere. We will listen from the status of the updates on the Pub Bulletin at 74, and we will talk about the upcoming webinars of Grosolan. And then a very interesting item about the digitalization of the analytical results. So some examples also on uh, soil information management systems. And then we will uh, agree on the work plan for next year. 
and renew the governance of Glossoland. So as I mentioned yesterday, if there is any um, anyone who would like to uh, candidate for the position of chair and vice chair, you can do it, send me your, your curriculum. Yesterday, we already presented two candidates, uh, Mustafa Abdurrahman from Niger and Anana Rui from, from France. Uh, but in case there is any other candidate, let us know. Um, and tomorrow we will proceed to the to the um, to the to the election. So thanks again. I wish you a nice rest of the day. I don't know if Miriam or Mustafa, you would like to say something to close the meeting. Um... No, only thank you all of you for the attendance to the meeting, and um, I I hope. Uh, uh, this meeting uh, it was uh, fruitful uh, and see you tomorrow thanks thanks Miriam and uh, Mustafa yes I mean, chair of Glossoland. yeah yeah I will talk on the same line she said we thank everybody as the meeting is a real success and I saw the great participation of no money thanks for everything everybody so see you tomorrow Great. See you tomorrow at the same time of today. So 12 uh, room time, Bye. noon. And then we we'll continue Thank tomorrow. You. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.